lift your voice inside outside let us bless the name of the Lord the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords we honor you we worship you we worship you we worship you Shabbat the Lord sing songs of worship to him let an incense of right of worship rise from within you to the God of all flesh we bow we worship let your name be lifted let our King be lifted oh tonight that your glory will fill this place and we ask tonight that you be enthroned in our lives I pray that you bless your people scattered all around this place and across different nations of the world different parts of this nation bless lift equip build let there be healings let there be deliverances I pray, O oh God, that your people will experience the fullness of your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. You're very welcome. Please be seated. I want us in one minute to just appreciate all those following us online. They may not be able to see us, but they can hear our clap. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's honor them thanks to the power of technology. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I want your spirit to be very sensitive. I want to, it's a prayer meeting. We're going to pray tonight. But I want to share with you a few things that I consider will truly, truly empower us you know i i sat back and i was thinking today just thinking of the the topics the teachings that god has brought from this place to the body of christ especially to us here different aspects of the life of the kingdom from prayer to excellence to success to spirituality to warfare to finances to family life the lord has been lavish
granting us access to deep secrets the mysteries of the kingdom i was teaching the school of ministry students and um, i taught them something that i think is is, is good for us to know i said um, every true apostolic ministry must be able to communicate a dimension of the revelation of god to a generation in every dispensation there is a dimension of the dealings of god that he apportions for that generation to know about him and it is part of the apostolic ministry to be able to capture that dimension of the understanding of god that he has apportioned for a people and to be able to accurately teach god's people so that they having that understanding will come into that experience praise the lord and um, honestly god has been faithful to us granting us access every time i sit back and i listen to the testimonies i look at the lives of so many people here and looking at the things that god has done what god is doing i get text messages every day from people across several parts of this nation around the world just communicating their gratitude for what the teachings the meetings have done and for me i am deeply deeply humbled and tonight he will show us that path again never be tired of learning the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets of god the mysteries of the kingdom are how men rise that's how men become powerful in this system hallelujah paul said i went up by revelation not by desire i went up by revelation so when you access the truths of the kingdom they have a way of making you powerful it is god's design that in every territory scattered across the earth there will be men and women who have paid the price to be his image bearers in reality that at every given point of our lives and our environment that he must find an envoy somebody that can allow the multifaceted possibilities of god to find expression within a given territory the kingdom only comes when god is able to find sufficient men who have aligned themselves sufficiently to his purposes through knowledge and obedience when you can find a man who has paid that price of alignment then you see the beauty of the power and the glory of god displayed within a territory the revelation of god that is seen in a territory is not all that god is it is the limitation that the aligned vessels have provided he will have to work with the vessels that are available at any given time are we together now so god can step into a place like zaria and never be able to manifest his healing dimension never be able to manifest himself as a deliverer that does not mean he cannot heal it doesn't mean he cannot deliver but the level of alignment it takes for a vessel to allow him release that possibility he cannot find it so he will have to make do with what is available but happy and blessed is any man who pays the price of alignment to be able to be an effective host of God's glory allowing every dimension of God that he desires to find expression to find expression and this personally is the theme for my life that there will be nothing God seeks to do in a territory that he would not be able to do just because I am not aligned enough and so we continue to press daily we press through knowledge we press through desire we take advantage of his grace and mercy it's like a ladder we keep climbing and we are being transformed we are being enlarged our capacities are we experience that expansion in the spirit and we are able to host more of him then you find out that your life becomes an effulgence of a sign and a wonder the reality of that immortal dimension of the workings of god in your life starts becoming glaring it becomes clear to people that this is not a normal human being and they are not lying because divinity is swallowing you up gradually 
and you are beginning to manifest possibilities of someone who is obviously under the influence of a spirit like you see someone manifesting under the anointing ordinarily you don't have the capacity to move in that kind of speed when you see someone manifesting unusual strength you know that that is another agency through him every time you align in the spirit you help to advance the purposes of god let me tell you something god is searching for men he still is searching for men never should we wallow in that deception that because there are many churches there are many programs happening it means that god is finding a people no alignment is not something that um is a costly exercise it's a costly sacrifice alignment is one of the hardest things for a believer to do because it will require pruning it will require death it will require discipline it will require commitment it will cost you your tears it will cost you your appetites but the end thereof is glory so the bible says that i reckon that the sufferings of this present time right romans 8 and verse 18 i reckon i come to terms with the fact that the sufferings the constraints of this present time you are on your way to becoming something there is a revelation in the heart of the father that you should become and he says on your way to becoming that thing there will be constraints you will cry it will cost you are we together now obedience is costly very costly and so it will constrain you and when that happens he says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time he gives you hope he says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you when you watch a woman pregnant the constraints she may have to spit when she doesn't have to spit she may have to go through all kinds of constraints but give her nine months in that condition the moment she gives birth to a child she becomes an object of celebration people come around to look at the miracle of another life through a woman that's how people will gather around your life one day and wonder the level of alignment it would take to manifest the kind of anointing and glory that you're manifesting listen let me tell you something spending time in the presence of god has value in every wise it has monetary value it has influence value it has time redemption value there is no time spent in the presence of god that is a waste away with that religious proposition that people bring that when you wait in god's presence you are busy people stay in god's presence and they are looking at their watches as though they have something to do most of the things we seek can only be found in his presence only be found in his presence it pays to wait and while we wait it pays to hear him because for every time he speaks he redeems your future for every time he speaks he grants you access to rise that ladder of power that ladder of grace hallelujah it says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge not just through your desire grace unction we want power we want to see the glory of god the effulgence of his person only a lazy and unserious student will attend lectures for four weeks and say i'm tired no you continue why because there is a goal you know that one day you aim for something and so like a man who wants to win the olympic you press you press there are times that you will have to go for the lectures in the rain but you overlook the inconveniences of the moment are we together i want you to pray in one minute and cry and say lord i'm here again continue the training continue the dealing make me wiser make me better let me encounter another dimension of your anointing another dimension of your glory 
spirit of the living god i have come tonight to align myself the more this is the school of the spirit i have come make me powerful open my eyes activate my senses in the spirit place something upon my life that my generation will live to celebrate let me not pass as an ordinary person let a deposit of eternity be upon me mm. do something in my life that will cost me it will it will last me my lifetime i have come to eat of the bread of the spirit this is bethel the place where the spirit of god will grant you fresh manna fresh manna fresh manna he told the prophet eat for the journey is far you will need that mystery you will need that revelation the fierceness of life will not allow you to learn in the face of battle you will need to be prepared the fierceness of life will not allow you to be searching for mysteries when the trouble comes you must be equipped so that before it comes you know what to apply that you have capacity to read the writings on the wall and know what to do and what to say he said jesus himself knew what to do hallelujah please sit down listen it is costly to start looking for answers when the trouble comes you see sometimes the trouble has the capacity of destroying you and will not give you a chance to learn what law to overcome you prepare for battle before battle you don't prepare for battle during battle are we together don't wait until they tell you your wife cannot give birth and then you now run and try to find the mysteries that can be able to navigate another part and cause your wife to give birth don't wait until they drive you from work and then you now say what is the mystery of favor again no you are too late surround yourself with mysteries like chariots so that when the devil fires his arrow before it gets to you a revelation you have in store will arise the the shield listen that shield is a defense whether you are sleeping or awake you have a bad dream you are not even praying a scripture just fires from your dream realm he shall keep his angels charge over me don't react to things when they come are we together now yes don't wait until the day they tell you oh something happened and you are now panicking no god is equipping us with the mysteries that will prepare us so that nothing surprises you someone comes and meets you and says we're in trouble and you say what happened rain washed our house you say glory be to god don't worry there is a system in the spirit where we can remedy for that constraint listen your confidence in life is based on the the mysteries of the kingdom that you are equipped with fear is a product of ignorance you will always be afraid when you perceive that you are not in control of a situation this is the reason for fear you never fear anything you have control over ignorance gives the devil control over every aspect of our lives so we don't know whether we are going to live or die we say we don't know whether we'll be rich or poor we don't know whether we'll be successful or failures we don't know whether people will favor us or not god cannot keep you to walk in a system surrounded by such confusion and ignorance and then tell you to not fear no the antidote to fear is knowledge knowledge so that when your uncle looks at you and says i can't help you again i'm sorry you know how you say uncle thank you thank you for what you have done so far because you have a mystery that every good and perfect gift comes from above it only comes through men not from men so if one man is not available heaven is still available and he can find another man that revelation alone settles you so you are not jumping around and saying, uncle what can we do that's a foolish and stupid way of speaking it's like going to a filling station all fuel comes from the ground not the filling station 
So if the filling station packs up, we know that there's still fuel in Nigeria. All you need to do is look for another filling station. Are we together now? May God grant us knowledge. See, the Bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. Once you find out that your life is a product of fear and panic, it's not because you are young or old. It's not because you are a civil servant or a businessman. It's not because you are living in the north or south. Uh -uh. It's because you have not sustained the understanding that gives you confidence. Nobody is born with confidence. It's a resultant effect of something. Joy is a product of something that you know. Fear is a product of something that you know or something that you don't know. Hallelujah. Please sit down. I have such passion to see us grow in the spirit. So we don't just deceive ourselves and say, I'm a spiritual man. A spiritual man is not is not something ambiguous there are exact standards that can measure spirituality spirituality is not something that one man hides in the pocket and say I am spiritual no there are clear spiritual standards if they have been met you are spiritual if they have not been met you are not spiritual it's as simple as that hallelujah That's why we labor to make sure that the atmosphere is set week in, week out. Because we know that someone's destiny is dependent on what is shared here. Someone's life is dependent on what is shared here. This is an issue of life and death. It's not just an issue of a voluntary thing. No, it says they are alive to those who find them. That means those who don't find them can die. Are we together now? life is spiritual that's why the bible says everything listen it says everything that is done in the house of god must be done from a standpoint of spiritual mindedness this is not my teaching but i just felt a need to do that everything in the house of god must be consecrated and it must be done under the influence of the anointing otherwise it will add to jeopardizing the atmosphere and not allow God's presence find expression if you are a cleaner in the house of God you must clean under the anointing to contribute to making the atmosphere set you can't say I'm not a member of prayer department I'm just a keyboardist this thing this gentleman is playing is not just music if his personal secret place his personal altar has a problem the sound that will come out from there will obstruct what god is doing in your spirit he will be playing the same thing and wonder why it's not edifying you because he's playing his secret place amplifying it to people he's not playing music a gentleman holding a camera like this and he's not doing it spiritual you will be surprised at what dimension of interruption such canality can provide in the spirit and stop the anointing of the spirit I, I'm, I'm, he can do his work but if it is not done spiritually the protocol people standing if they are just standing like employed people you see that's why you are a pastor here let me teach you a big secret value spirituality more than talent and gifts talent and gifts are secondary to spirituality nobody should serve in the house of god just because he's talented no your talent is inconsequential as far as your spirituality is concerned talent only becomes useful when you are dealing with spiritual people so we have our churches and our groups and ministries full of very very gifted people but all kinds of spiritual obstructions you see someone who hold a mic beautiful voice but you can't tell why your spirit is resisting what is coming from him you love the song but something about the voice there is no physical reason why your spirit should not receive it something about an atmosphere that he or she is carrying or not carrying 
is responsible for that that's why we pray that's why we wait in his presence it's not just to increase skill it's so that we can come with the atmosphere of heaven and everything that is communicated to you even if it is something you have had before it comes with a fresh anointing it comes with a fresh atmosphere and it can cause transformation you are not in ministry if you cannot host the presence of God no any church anybody that cannot host the presence of God in their meetings capture the presence of God is a cinema it's a complete waste of time so everything must be done under the anointing we have trained the workers and we still encourage them all the time be spiritual as an usher you are not just holding people under the anointing you are not just cleaning seats you are spiritual are we together now someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of your service not just your service the spirituality of it someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of my teaching my preaching not just the dispensing of gifts but the spirituality of it that's what can bring the transformation and bring the miracles I just thought that it's good that we remind ourselves it's not so much about skill it's not so much about action but the the fire the passion the presence the glory that backs up what we do that's what produces the results tonight I want to teach very briefly on the altar of prayer pay attention I'm going to share something with you that will bless your life the altar of prayer I want us to understand the mystery of altars oh speak from the heavens and the earth will see oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling me. Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, take my praise. Hallelujah. Listen, the body of Christ is full of a lot of ignorance when it comes to the issue of prayer when it comes to the issue of warfare when it comes to the issue of the interaction between the realm of the spirit and the earth realm there is gross ignorance in the body of Christ as to the mysteries that are responsible for these operations that's what I've been seeking to do to teach us and help us understand how men can contact the realm of the spirit because man by design is the only entity that on legal grounds has the authorization to make contact with the realm of the spirit and make contact with the physical realm at will every other entity needs a system of authorization are we together now altars most people do not know what altars are and for most people when you hear altar you just think oh it's just these ignorant prayer ministries around that are just looking for a way you you will die like a chicken when you are ignorant of the mystery of altars there is no great man who does not understand this whether he admits it openly or not is a different thing but let me tell you there is no man doing business in this kingdom 
or in the secular world who does not understand the mystery of altars pay attention to what you will learn and you will see triumph in 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 ways that will shock you an altar is a system of authorization I want to share a few things with you about altars an altar is a system of authorization an altar is not just a monument it is a system of authorization an altar is a platform write it down where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds an altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds i'm taking out time for us to write this because i want us to understand it i said an altar is a system of authorization and then an altar is a platform where on legal grounds the realm of the spirit is allowed to make contact with the physical realm there are other illegal routes there are other illegitimate platforms but the legitimate platform where the realm of the spirit can find expression in this realm is an altar because according to the law of territory a spirit or an entity cannot enter another entity another territory without the configuration to suit that territory for instance a spirit should not be in the earth without a body that's against the law of territory if you must function in the earth realm as a territory you must have a body are we together now so every spirit including god is at the mercy of a body or an altar to find expression in a territory the first death recorded in the bible happened on account of altars two men brothers went to offer sacrifices and all of them created platforms that was way before the old testament adam had access to mysteries and he taught his children how to invoke the presence of god and it's not the way it is today there and then you will know whether what you did worked or not and the bible says abel did something and cain did something too and all of a sudden the sacrifice of abel ascended the heavens are we together now and then for cain nothing happened and then cain killed his brother and blood spilled upon the earth and he thought it was over but the bible told us that discussion continued in the realm of the spirit something about that activity called the presence of god and god said okay there is a discussion going on in heaven but this discussion is between me and blood so what is going on he said am i my brother's keeper i said ah, don't tell lies there is a witness standing in heaven here that blood a symbol of an altar is granted me authorization to probe you and because of that i'm going to curse you judgment still happened even after abel died listen very carefully to what i'm teaching you supernatural system of authorization an altar let me give you one more definition is where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is the platform where covenants are both activated and maintained a covenant cannot work without an altar it is an altar that gives life to a covenant it's impossible for altars to work covenants to work without an altar an altar is like the battery that powers this gadget for instance the potentials of this gadget is only seen when you slot in the battery that's what an altar is it gives life to a covenant now write this down please altars can be physical monuments 
altars can be institutions and altars can be people altars can be physical monuments like we had in the old testament they would erect stones altars can be institutions like the jerusalem temple that was built by solomon he said oh god if anybody faces this temple and prays hearken to that person's prayer not because of the rightness of the prayer but a covenant that was enacted there and an altar was raised to that effect the reason why salvation the covenant of salvation can work is because there is an altar that was erected not just in the earth in heaven the book of hebrews tells us that jesus the high priest carried his blood to the most holy place in heaven and poured it upon an altar that is still speaking today that is the basis upon which whoever calls upon the name of the lord whether in you are sleeping whether you are awake it kicks that reality you will be saved because there is an altar that eternally secures that there are many platforms that god has created to allow spirit entities to find expression in the earth realm to come and assist men to come and empower men but if we do not understand those platforms then we will not be able to take advantage of it and one of it is what i'm talking about tonight an altar of prayer as a system of authorization an altar of prayer as a mystery that on legal grounds authorizes the realm of the spirit to influence the activities of men here in the earth realm please write this down the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life not bible study no sir the most accurate measure of how healthy your spiritual life is is your prayer life no matter what else is working in your life if your prayer life is dead then you are not spiritual are we together anyone can preach anyone can teach but not everyone can pray never forget this it's very easy to preach very easy to teach but it's a sacrifice to pray any and everyone can preach any and everyone can teach but not everyone can pray because prayer is a sacrifice is a mystery let me tell you something god is so meticulous about the revelation of altars that he rules the world sitting on an altar the very throne room is like a shrine surrounded with mysteries the epicenter of the throne room is the very throne that he sits upon that throne you see is an altar it's what makes him the ancient of days he sits upon that altar and manipulates things according to his predeterminate counsel doesn't have to walk around heaven to find out who is rebellious there is a system that has been designed to ensure order an altar anyone who will walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar everyone who seeks to walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar tonight we are particularly looking at the altar of prayer the ministry of prayer is one that is largely hated by many either because of the spiritual energy that it involves or because of the sacrifice and the discipline that is involved in the ministry of prayer but scattered around scripture all through the bible are scriptures that encourage believers to pray and it makes them understand that their lives and their victories dependent on it in luke chapter 18 verse 1 
the bible says he spake this parable to the end that means the goal of this parable was to teach men a lesson and the lesson is that men ought always to pray and not to faint always always not a circumstantial activity men ought always to pray and not to faint in matthew chapter 21 when you read from verse 13 the bible says jesus entered the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all kinds of things in the temple and he was angry and in verse 13 chapter 21 he scattered everywhere and said my house shall be called a house of prayer my house shall be called a house of prayer it's impossible to be a man of prayer and ignore the word but it's possible to be a man of the word and ignore prayer when the devil wants to deceive you he makes you look like you have an option to choose between prayer and the word and then he indoctrinates you and carries takes advantage of your passion for knowledge and keeps you to be cold and dry and lukewarm and all of a sudden you begin to search scriptures like a philosopher and there is no power no grace no efficiency every great ministry starts from the altar of prayer any ministry that does not start as a prayer ministry will not last it's impossible the ministry of jesus started as a prayer ministry the moment he was filled with the holy spirit he was driven of the spirit 40 days and 40 nights traveling in prayer and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit all of a sudden his fame began to spread devils will fly around and say no 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 no! you have come to destroy us before our time the ministry of prayer in james chapter 5 verse 16 please give it to us james chapter 5 verse 16 i want you to understand this tonight is an admonishment and then we're going to pray james 5 verse 16 he says confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that he may be healed then he says the effectual prayer of a righteous man he says availed much availed much amplified says it is dynamic in its working it can produce results and we're going to examine these results that the prayer of a believer is not just an empty talk it's not just an exercise in futility it's not just a religious system to feel spiritual that every time men pray there is an effect now theologically speaking the classic scripture that is used to represent the activity of altars is genesis chapter 28 we are not turning there for time's sake but many of us know it i'm just giving you a little theological background um abraham had passed across a region and the bible says that he set up an altar there and many years later jacob his son are we together now a son in the flesh now a, a generation now was passing that place and the night time came and he felt look let me just lie down and sleep and the bible says he put stones together and laid down to sleep he didn't pray for an encounter he didn't beg for an encounter the moment he slept the bible says his eyes were open and he saw strange activities happening the angels ascending descending it was like a, a portal a ladder and at the top of it was god himself and he was surprised when he woke up he said wow this is a portal this is the gate of heaven i saw something that happened a portal an altar the lord was in this place and i knew not now watch this is because jacob slept there and recorded his experience that we know that that place had an effect do you know that whether or not jacob slept there you can be passing peacefully and for whatever reason cross across that place and something happens to you all of a sudden you find out that the sickness just disappeared you didn't pray now you are wondering what happened now you don't know it was jacob's experience that helped us to understand that there was such a thing the same way elijah when he was about to leave
he knew that there was a, an exact portal that can take men physically he went beyond the Jordan and he said Elisha asked I'm about to leave and right before his eyes he saw chariots when Jesus was about to levitate to go to heaven he knew exactly where to stand when he, they watched him and he began to rise there are physical portals in the earth that open up to the realm of the spirit not visions physical places a man can stand there today and have encounters whether you are the prophetic or not which is understand this many people understand this i wish i had time to teach you on altars because i would teach you that one of the natural ways of establishing an altar is consistency of a practice within a region it opens up an altar consistency of practice within a region that that atmosphere is spiritually acclimatized the moment you practice something consistently you attract the spirit dimension of that thing to come and find out what is going on so if i keep killing people in a particular region i don't need to invite any spirit i create a portal the moment a spirit comes in partnership with me that becomes an altar that's why in many regions many campuses they have different regions some have prayer mountains some have we used to have years ago um, in the campus there somewhere they call long tennis court that was a physical solid portal that's where you see people carry their rechargeable and their socks for mosquitoes and go there and lie down and say oh god if you don't help me i'm dead and by the next morning there is a miracle you find people just mind their business standing and start shaking because activities over many years there were people making use of that ground and it became sanctified angelic activities became so much there it was it was like how you do home cell because there are visitations and many members are within a region you dedicate a place and say look all of you within this region you can freely find expression here consistency can open up a portal are you learning something tonight that's how many of our parents made our homes certain portals every time they continued doing certain things and they did not know when they invited the spirit dimensions you see let me tell you consistency attracts the realm of the spirit consistent ask those who practice other religions you know how they invoke spirits enchantments the same word repeated over a long period of time how do they celebrate traditional festivals in many villages the people keep dancing doing the same thing for hours and then it becomes like they are supercharged at a point the spirit component of that activity has come i like you to say lord open my eyes say it open my eyes open my eyes there is a law in the dealings of god with men and he says whatever you yield yourself to he says you will become a slave of that thing have, have you have you are we together if i practice obedience consistently i have yielded my members to obedience i become a slave to obedience are we together now you see watch this if i steal this handkerchief watch this if i steal this handkerchief out of my volition it's not enough to bring the spirit of theft in my life no if i do it again and i do it again that i don't know i'm invoking a mystery by my consistency a time will come the spirit that operates on men will say i'm being invited within a territory it will look for the territory where the physical dimension of what is bringing it is the same way if i begin to pray i may not feel comfortable but as i'm praying i'm invoking a dimension of the operation of the spirit of the spirit of prayer and supplication a day will come in that place that dimension will be revealed in me
supernaturally are you learning something because you see not all altars were consciously built but they are still altars so it is when i say altars that are destroying you it doesn't mean you have to go to your village and waylay your uncle and say if you don't tell us what you have done we will beat you no he may be innocent this is where the prophetic ministry must be guided because every time we talk of altar they think it must be traceable to a real experience no the mysteries that you do consistently are building altars and they eventually become invitations for spirits whether the spirit of god or any kind of demon spirit have you had an experience i'm not saying you should do it but you've seen it in ministries where somebody can come no church service just enter the church and come and lie down on the altar and roll maybe for a child and go back and have triplets now question was anybody preaching but because the the power and the presence of god has found expression upon that ground for a long time you have invited you have invoked a dimension whether service is at work or not that portal remains open all that it takes is your faith once your faith meanders that atmosphere it happens to you samuel was an altar he didn't have an altar he was an altar you never came near samuel and went back the same no a young man came around Samuel and stood naked prophesied morning till night that's an altar when Saul went and met Samuel they were looking for the donkey as soon as they saw Samuel they knew their lives were going to be altered I told you altars are not just physical monuments you can be an altar and that's one of the things that prayer does you don't build a monument your life becomes the activation of several listen the beauty of prayer is not just for you to continue talking for the rest of your life but that you get to a state of consistency where even in your silence listen you have become an altar spiritual activities can be happening around you so that as a living altar i activate possibilities just by walking you come around me and something happens to you i didn't directly pray for you you didn't even know you had that problem but an atmosphere that i was carrying implicated you why is prayer important why do we have to build an altar of prayer three reasons very quickly number one prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him write it down prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him the Bible is very clear that the communion of the spirit the fellowship of the spirit what we call koinonia must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with God and that system of koinonia is through prayer prayer is one of God's authorized system not the only authorized system but one of the major authorized system for communion and fellowship Luke chapter 6 let's take a few scriptures very quickly Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 please give it to us Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 then we'll look at Matthew 26 verse 36 and down to 39 is actually to 44 but we'll stop at 39 quickly Luke chapter 6 verse 12 look up everyone please it says and it came to pass those days speaking about Jesus now that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God communion Jesus was not just praying prayer requests like we do during miracle service 
remember he was god he still is god but he went to spend time all night communing communing give us matthew matthew 26 and verse 36 matthew 26 verse 36 then come at jesus with them listen this was uh, his passion was about to start then come at jesus with them unto a place called gethsemane and said unto the disciples sit here while i go and pray yonder and let's watch what the bible calls prayer and he took from him peter and the two sons of zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy 38 then he said unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me please continue quickly and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying saying this sounds like a communication a conversation my father if it be possible let this call pass of me when you read down to verse 44 he prayed the same thing three times prayer is god's authorized system of communion not just a platform for petitions prayer is how power is transferred to men is an authorized system of communion is your spiritual system of intimacy and intercourse in the place of prayer that's where the exchange happens between divinity jesus was filled with the holy spirit but never manifested the power of the holy ghost after prayer the bible says he returned not full of the spirit but in the power of the spirit In Luke 17 don't turn there John 17 sorry Jesus himself began to communicate with the father as usual and he says father the hour has come watch communion to prayer the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son will bring glory to you and then he began to converse look at all the platforms till today listen till today how jesus advocates for believers in heaven is still through prayer the bible says he's seated at the right hand of the father and he makes intercession for the saints why will you intercede when you are already seated by the right hand it's a system it's not about proximity it's a system of communion and communication If you are not a man of prayer you are not a woman of prayer you can be sure that the reality of communion and fellowship with the holy ghost that reality you see let me tell you something if you are not open to prayer you will never understand what we are saying you would think it's just um i'm not just talking of corporate prayer corporate prayer is great but you must have the secret place that's where he comes to meet with you that's when he tells you things he cannot tell any other person the reason why you don't hear god is because you are not used to his voice in the secret place he has not trained you to hear him so you hear everything and you call it him i was counseling a couple some i think i don't know if it was last week and um the mother was outside and the father came in with the daughters maybe they are even here listening to me and they held a little baby as soon as the baby shouted from outside the mother identified the voice and came to check what was happening with the baby and i said koinonia that's intimacy because there is a union that baby is sucking from the same mother their interaction the mother did not train herself to hear the voice she was implicated by that koinonia so anywhere she, there were many people families with their children but when she had her own he said my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice meaning if you cannot ask hear his voice find out whether you are his sheep or not don't assume you are his sheep assumption is costly in the school of intimacy you must verify that there is contact between you and god there are pastors that don't pray so they get angry they think the manifestation of the power of god is magic there are dimensions impartation will not give you 
you must dig your well by yourself you must create an altar a system you must gain mastery in the realm of the spirit you must be used to the spiritual communication that has been act is is like a tailor-made system of god reaching you god must know how to reach you on serious informations god must know how to reach you on trivial informations he must train your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit that place of training is the secret place i will never trade anything for my time with him that's where men are built that's where there is an exchange see let me tell you holding a mic and teaching is not difficult holding a mic and preaching is not difficult but communicating life that one is a derivative of your altar that's why we sleep in church that's why our churches are full of dry bones from the preacher to those listening all dry bones people stand and talk they say something that should bless you and you wonder why it doesn't bless you because there's no altar they are standing unassisted by the realm of the spirit number two quickly why do we need the altar of prayer prayer creates a legal platform for god prayer creates a legal platform for god angels and the spirit realm to gain entrance and access prayer creates a legal platform mark the word legal it has to be legal the realm of the spirit is a legal realm the dealings of god with men are on legal grounds that's why god could not just pronounce men justified the system had to be followed to the latter prayer creates a legal platform for god angels and the spirit realm to gain entrance or access and intervene in the affairs of men and offer assistance to men whichever you want to write a platform for entrance legally i know that many of you are surprised why should god almighty need the cooperation of a man to step into the realm he limited himself in the creation of man let me show you two scriptures that i think will bless you psalms 115 verse 16 it's a popular scripture in the body of christ psalms 115 and verse 16 then give us ezekiel 22 from verse 30 to 31 psalms 115 verse 116 can we read it together one to read the heaven even the heavens other versions say the heaven of heavens are the lord's read on but the earth as a territory has he given to where watch this let me give you a little explanation if if a jimmy has a house are we together and he decides to rent that house to me now it is true that it is still his house but does he have a right to just enter anytime again no even if he comes to that house although it is your house but there is a legal transaction that happened between me and you so even as the landlord you will still knock and i have a right to tell you you are disturbing my privacy and you will still go so god is still the lord of all creation but he carved out a domain of his kingdom apportioned it to man and it became scripturally incorrect for god to come to the earth without a man permitting him that's why the holy spirit had to move michael gabriel to come and ask for permission from mary before jesus entered her womb mary could not just see her womb no 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 it was a discussion this is what we want to do can your womb be available the word was the permission be it unto me i authorize you how shall these things be don't worry about the dynamics your womb will just don't be surprised when you find out your stomach is just protruding be it unto me and he had to go to joseph and say joseph you are about to see something strange in your wife now i know that is going to shock you but please 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 don't drive her 
there is a mystery she's carrying and joseph calm down look at how god had to go to the relevant people to ask for permission permission one by one while he was doing that he was breathing upon anna the prophetess to keep praying breathing on simeon in the temple to keep praying john the baptist who will baptize and ordain jesus his father wanted to play with redemption he thought he was just playing with a sacrifice an angel appears to him and says mr man your wife is going to have a child the name is john and he, met, he spoke one kind of nonsense and heaven said no 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 this guy would disallow us shut his mouth he's a priest meaning there is a grace for him to operate in that priestly office shut his mouth so that he will not say anything because words are padlocks and are keys it can disallow and allow realities so he said shut his mouth this this guy wants to spoil this thing we are doing and they shut his mouth not as wickedness as a strategy to make sure john arrives so that jesus will be commissioned when john was born they said what shall we name him the wife said john they said no we've not had this name then they went to the dumb father now mr man what was the last thing when you spoke with the angel what did you hear and he wrote on the book john is that a prayer and his mouth opened god said now you can say anything you want to say you have authorized heaven now watch this look how hard it is for god to find expression in the earth he must go around that's why i taught you about the gift of men god cannot be the author of death knowing how hard it is to find a man and find expression through him for 430 years god was busy preparing the man who will be a deliverer not if he promised abraham captivity for 400 years but even god became limited for 30 extra years until moses was trained Are you blessed John the Baptist found himself in the wilderness the requirement to ordain Jesus he ate locusts and wild honey had sheep camel you know clothes and all of that and he came out and started baptizing baptized Jesus Christ and that was all and Jesus began his ministry listen every time it looks like darkness is prevailing over your life it is not that god is limited it is because you have not understood that until heaven is authorized god can do nothing about it the heaven of heavens belong to the lord the earth has he given to the sons of men elijah knew this that everything under the heavens was within the jurisdiction of men and he didn't go to beg god he went and said i lock up because this cloud that brings rain is under the heavens so i lock it up and i put the key in my pocket listen to what he said there would not be rain except at my word but the bible james apostle james had a revelation of what he did he said don't think he just spoke grammar he went and locked himself and prayed endlessly he was a man of like passion but he allowed God Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 and 31 please quickly many of us have not been assisted by the spirit realm simply because we do not know that we have a role we have a role to creating the portal that grants us access to assistance and i search for a man among them listen who is talking here god to his prophet why will god be looking for men with over how many people at, at that time in the earth and is still applicable to us today i sought for a man among them that should make up what a hedge a gap they have violated something they invoked a mystery that will force me now to punish them but in my kindness i'm searching for a man who can make me change my mind but i'm not finding any therefore don't blame me when your family remains poor it's not that i want satan to prevail there is something that happened in your family 
that lifted an altar of poverty and God keeps watching it ravage you for decades and God is saying I'm searching for a man who will rise up as an altar and cause me to act otherwise I was until I learned this I was surprised how God would just allow evil to happen like that and many people say ah, ah, but God can't you arise he said when you pray ask me that my kingdom should come what, what kind of thing is that ask me authorize me Matthew 6 he was teaching them the beatitudes when you pray part of the content of your authorization should be that the kingdom come he said as I hear you say before my ears so will I do please leave it there I sought for a man among them that should make up the head and stand in the gap before me for what not just for an individual for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none so let's see what would happen in 31 Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude even Pharaoh and his army slain by the sword saith the Lord Ezekiel 22 you're giving us a wrong scripture here that's what I gave you right Ezekiel 22 30 31 please correct it and let's have it quickly media are we there please help help whoever is working we need some level of accuracy the scripture I'm looking for the scripture that therefore have I poured out that is what we just read therefore have I poured out my word indignation upon them I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have I recompensed upon their heads in other words it looks like I'm the one punishing them but they cost it they cost it that means the darkness in your family regardless of what people are saying oh God my name is John we are still dying and God is saying don't look at me as a wicked person I while I'm I'm pathetic there is a legal system operating this operation and somebody must arise and become a, an altar that activates something different and then you will now see my kindness listen God is not the one ruling this earth with the nonsense that is happening there are manipulations that are sending strange incense and we are receiving assistances from strange spirits that are antichrist and they are helping to destroy the world but he must find a people that's why men are a serious business to God many of us act unassisted many pastors act unassisted the realm of the spirit is available to assist but until we call until we call pray in tongues for one minute and say Lord I call you I call you into my life and into my situation I don't assume you are aware I authorize you Shabras Kataba Segete Kalabarosa Sibriyasha Lord if you don't step in something will go wrong in my life my family is in trouble for 30 years nobody has risen in my lineage something is wrong every year someone is dying yet there are prophetic words over my family I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabras Katako Sibaria Sakatoba Shiva. Ten graduates, no one is employed. Ten ladies, no one married. All the men in the family are fed by all the women. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabakoto Sobakai. Lekete kota sabres katoshi paratia. 
everyone in my family fails when a miracle is about to come another mystery kicks in everyone in my family must have a child out of wedlock it happened to my grandmother it happened to my mother now the devil wants it to happen to me hallelujah please sit down listen let me tell you i studied my life i studied my lineage i studied my family and i saw things that i knew were not funny i knew that those things were activations and if i were to answer the call of god upon my life and prevail something was happening An altar gives life to a covenant. I saw things happening around my life, happening around my family. Let me tell you what most of us do. We identify what is wrong. Then we hope that a man of God will solve it for us. Yes, when you need a higher anointing, that's a different thing. But many of us just complain. Nothing is working in my life. My father graduate, my mother graduate, 10 of us in our family graduate nothing is working it will continue like that because there is something making god look like a wicked person i sought for a man in your family it's not that he cannot convert everybody to become a christian i sought for a man who will raise an altar of righteousness that will allow me to do wonders wanting to deliver the nation of israel from egypt imagine how the heart of god bled when he saw the soldiers of pharaoh weeping god's covenant people man who is the man that i will send in ezekiel 37 ezekiel stood before the dry bones i thought god would say bones come back to life he said ezekiel you know this law of territory i can't speak and it will just happen so i will tell you i will speak from heaven to you then you speak now in the earth I prophesied as I was commanded when God spoke the bone did not move when he prophesied as he commanded all of a sudden there was a sound oh God spoke to me in a vision as I had that dream and God said it's over and you get up and just smile you are joking it will never be over it was over in the realm of the spirit what you do with that encounter is to stand up put that word and say I legislate I agree with you lord my prayer and my dancing and my rejoicing is my agreement that's why we have many dreams that never come to pass you see 10 over 10 in the realm of the spirit you see zero in the physical you see a job in the realm of the spirit you see demotion in the physical god told you his intention in the realm of the spirit your carelessness aborted it in the physical take seriously what i'm saying the same way you see that somebody is about to be sick or to be destroyed in your family and you get up and just keep quiet and then the day something devastating happens you say hey i saw this thing that's a pain in the heart of god because he he kept moving around your whole house by his spirit searching for who was alert enough to communicate to him that this is a plot from darkness when God did anything in the nation of Israel and did not tell the prophets, they were angry. Read your Bible. They say, God hid this thing from me. Number three. What is the third? Purpose of the altar of prayer. The altar of prayer is God's authorized system for enforcing dominion. God's authorized system for enforcing dominion and compliance. 
God gave man dominion over creation it will take man exercising it and prayer is the authorized platform for enforcing dominion the Bible says we do not yet see all things under his feet so although God has said you will rise up as an international man of God but you will watch your life crumble to nonsense because before your arrival another altar had been raised and so it will take you enforcing dominion I may come from this family but I officially divorce myself from every nonsense that happened no the same way someone is born of a millionaire and all of a sudden the child starts enjoying the benefits even before being aware that is the implication are we together now a woman may be for instance um, having a particular biological disease maybe a hepatitis or something and give birth to an innocent child and they say that child also has hepatitis did the child ask for it no genetic condition is the same way what stopped your father stopped your mother you laughed at them and quarreled them he's still waiting for you because until it is destroyed listen let me tell you something about altars for as long as an altar is said it's alive the covenant will keep working that's the concept of priesthood priesthood is a system to keep altars alive so that covenants will remain in force so that certain dimensions will continue to operate there are many things that will not obey you until you force them to there are many things in your life your destiny will not open up just because you think you should have a good life that's a joke it's a costly joke you will not get a job just because you got first class you will not be promoted just because you think you are due nothing is fair in this life everything that happens to you is what you force to happen through knowledge apostle life is so unfair to us in the family i sympathize with you but this is the wickedness in the world that we live in listen if you want to take your portion in this life you are going to take it by enforcing compliance your church will not grow just because you think you're a nice pastor being nice is not the seed for results the ability to exercise dominion are we together yes it takes prayer there are many people who don't pray they just get up and please come you just see someone and and he say pastor pray for me and your ego is on the line and you know that you have not sustained power with God no altar of prayer and you just believe you just lay your hand and you lay your hands in the name of Jesus the Bible says yes it said yes the Bible said but it takes your life to activate that reality the Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick God said it I believe it it settles it you are a joker you are a big joker no it doesn't settle it no it doesn't settle it there is a dynamic to manifestation let's not mock ourselves and you try to pray for this person and all of a sudden number one he's not healed number two it backfires on you are we together now all of a sudden you find out that the same thing you try to pray for him for the tragedies and calamities in his life you brought yourself through ignorance and the whole thing backfired on you we are walking in an environment that is surrounded with altars they give you a job and you enter the company you are not the ceo you are walking there you don't know what spiritual backings have been invoked over that environment until you create your own climate you will be a victim of the default climate there are people who fraternize with the devil i will employ people to work for me but they will never rise above me 
so if the man goes down everybody will go down to still keep him above them because it's a covenant now you got a job fresh from the university your blood is hot everybody dances around church you carry your certificate and all of a sudden you are earning three hundred thousand but you cannot bring out ten thousand you are not a drunkard you don't pursue women you don't know what happened and all that swallows up that thing that's what i'm telling you what has happened to many of our parents so we think the solution is promotion oh god promote me then your salary is now four hundred thousand. the effect is still the same but a woman who went to a man of god and is joining a little prayer group in her ignorance is flying akara somewhere in the junction and with that akara she trains seven children in school it's not akara she was assisted by the realm of the spirit no sir you don't train children with with frying a car there you can come and meet that woman and beg her for a loan of hundred thousand and she will laugh she'll say i'm coming she will enter the room and bring it out yet you claim that you are doing a white collar job and the altar fights you listen please pay attention to what i'm telling you whenever you prevail in the realm of the spirit an altar prevailed believe what I'm telling you Zaria has an altar the effects of the altar in Zaria is predictable you see it in the civilization of the people you see it in what happens to people the marginalizations that people never rise to certain dimensions you came to Zaria and just thought it's all about going to church no you create your climate you create your climate that's why it says yeah though I walk though I walk through a valley that has the shadow of death I fear no evil because I carry another climate thy rod and thy staff they comfort me so you are in a place where people cannot live up to 40 years you know you are aware in your village you've seen people dying like chickens but you come with another order you understand that the altar of prayer is also an altar that can contend with everything and you are enjoying long life you are enjoying grace the person who married earliest in your family was 45 are we together and you look and you say no you get married then you must spend five or ten years to have your first child if you sit down and keep watching it and don't cry for assistance and don't force compliance it will never work I watch people and my heart bleeds at their perception of God which is based on their consistent sufferings they conclude that God is not a merciful God but they say I sought for a man that through the altar of prayer you can nullify certain activities legal ordinances that have been erected to speak you will be dreaming to believe there's nothing speaking against you now no sir you have lived too long to have created one by mistake you have lived too long on earth if you are up to one years old welcome to the reality of this life there has to be something speaking the bible says the sin of disobedience is like what witchcraft witchcraft what is the operation of witchcraft so we all want to rise it's a year of triumph and there is you think that the whole thing is your grandfather or grandmother and the day you hear that they are dead you rejoice the priesthood died but the altar is still alive you see that and the altar is fine and good doing well that's why you find out the solution is not just to kill people around the solution is through spiritual intelligence to lift up a spiritual fortification that vetoes everything brothers and sisters you will leave heaven on earth all of a sudden they will watch you ah, you've been in Zamfara for three years but you are returning as if you're in the UK you can fly to UK with that altar it will wait for you at Heathrow Airport as soon as you are landing 
you enter and all the doors close people who never knew you are still manipulated by that altar to walk against you and you thought it's just something in nigeria and at the end of it you come back after five years looking like a thief where have you been uk are you sure yes why are you like this you know the way life is people smuggle their way and pass through rivers and deserts all to go to germany and uk whereas they think that's the greener pasture the greener pasture is the altar you raise that speak that speak that speak until jesus came there was a universal altar speaking against man vengeance vengeance but when jesus came he established another altar that spoke better promises better things i cannot live walking and living my life to chance and hoping that things will be all right i know things will not be all right if they will be all right you must create it you must create it so i enforce compliance will the devil leave you because he thinks god anointed you no no satan is not that cheap you are going to contend that's why he said put on the whole armor put on the whole armor there is a devil somewhere that will destroy your life destroy your ministry destroy your business destroy your destiny you get married to a very lovely wife you loved her with all your heart they ask both of you will you love yourself you say yes the moment you married everybody brought their altars in holy matrimony now you are nice people this altar was designed to scatter the finances of whoever is standing with you and all of a sudden a good woman but you find out that your entire life starts going down and if you meet a a prophet who is not sound in scripture he will tell you your wife is the reason for your failure based on prophetic insight he has seen that there is an altar associated with her it's not a lie that is responsible for that downfall the individual may be the nicest person in the world but the altar will not change please hear what i'm teaching you and there are men no matter what happens if they marry maximum three years the wife must die and all of a sudden from the day the dear lady got married he may be a pastor apostle prophet how many men of god have altars fighting them they look around and they claim nothing is happening and they assume that because they took on the call for ministry god is too generous to allow them it's a joke no sir and this man gets married to this dear lady and all of a sudden she starts sleeping mysterious sicknesses she never had heart palpitations she will feel being pressed and she says my husband i don't know what is wrong i'm at, since we got married i said are you trying to say i'm a witch look at what the altars are causing then two of them go for counseling and they meet a man of god who is sincere but no spiritual intelligence and he says look it's how marriages are just take it easy pray together and it doesn't mean what he's saying and they say okay they say hug your wife in front of me they now hug themselves hold my hand darling they go back home the altar say welcome back by evening that man has slapped her again remember he promised in the presence of the pastor not to do it again but the altars brothers and sisters that's why god puts meetings like this because you can be sitting down now not knowing the deliverance that is happening you just feel something left me i don't know what happened and you go back and you who would have you would have blown somebody out of anger you find out that that force that comes upon you when you are angry that can make you insult anybody is no longer there because there is an altar this ministry you see is an altar we don't have an altar this is it's, a, it's an altar that's why you can talk against it in your secret place and start going down nobody is aware because the altar speaks all of a sudden a man of god will teach them how to raise altars and they will raise an altar of prayer and come and say look we are not bad people the devil is confusing us here you are a good woman i'm a good person we did not negotiate where to come from 
and all of a sudden day one Jekato Praskataya. now watch what is happening they are holding their hands and praying after that day they just feel good but nothing really happens I told you consistency is how spirits are attracted day two the, the man doesn't want to pray but she says honey remember we're on a project here you know what we, are, we have left at home let's do this thing after one week two weeks somebody starts having a dream somewhere after one week a spirit must appear to somebody somewhere and try to warn somebody an effect is being created in the realm of the spirit it's not a sign of weakness you can't sit upon hot fire and act as if it's not it can't be for too long listen to me that's what is happening to some of you now it was after your seven days of prayer you had a strange dream you have never had you thought it's a sign that you are losing it's a sign of victory something is happening in the realm of the spirit all of a sudden you went to sleep and you saw a vision of your mother when she was young your father when he was young the spirit of god is trying to show you something follow him but that's when the spirit of slumber comes god keeps saying for one month wake up by two o'clock there's something i'm doing in your life after two weeks you don't wake up again you see how we cheat ourselves and you don't know that you are on the path of deliverance you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign you reign hello king I promise you if you listen to what I'm teaching you tonight many of you as soon as you go back you will see the dream you will have this night the devil hates what you are hearing because this is the age-long mystery that has kept people in your family educated but it's like they are not educated a pastor you are blessing people but you never rise yourself do you know why because your victory is tied to your altar not just your service your altar I created an altar that is independent of koinonia and I said no devil will come and destroy me no no watch this please come again the two weeks we are praying Shabra Kato Sotobash Lembre Koto Shabaya we are praying we are praying we are fasting something starts happening one day there will be a breaking point in the realm of the spirit if that prayer were two hours a day will come to become a vigil not by not because you like it there will be you will break open a portal in the realm of the spirit and two hours prayer will become prayer till morning and your child will come and meet you and say daddy i saw a man in white and i saw the man doing something on your head spiritual activities are happening in the family all of a sudden you start seeing doors opening you love your wife like never before the devil told you the secret is to marry another one no sir you marry another one the altar is still the same there are pastors the altars that fight them anniversaries of their ministry something happens people start living they have raised so many people but have not been raised by themselves there are altars i've seen it fight people I've seen it fight people I know these altars fought me for years you go to sleep a strange woman appears to you and sleeps with you in the dream you get up and say sorry I don't know what is happening someone is about to marry you here comes a stranger again what is bringing the stranger have you ever asked you relocate to another house he still looks for you and comes Kabarota Sigata they are about to promote you in the office all of a sudden your physical document disappears physical document how many students seated here that's the mystery behind the results you are seeing the ugly results that you are seeing you love God and you are sincere but that's the mystery behind the demonic things you see on that board you are not that dull 
you write your exams and go back the altars continue writing things continue writing things i know what i'm saying listen to me you hear people coming here with four points they were not born that way they have tapped into a higher covenant you see them surprised by their own results they know it's not their efforts that's why people join certain ministries join certain men of god see people partner with certain anointings this is the mystery of partnership when you partner with an anointing you access the covenant the covenant not the promise the covenant there are parents today the moment you are 50 years arthritis you get up one morning father cannot walk mother cannot walk their entire pension is spent on it it's not sickness it's a programming an altar is accurate with digital precision regardless of your foreknowledge it will work it will work i have seen it destroy families i have seen it destroy ministries that's why certain ministries remain small no matter how anointed they are an anointed man with fire on his head but he will not cross certain boundaries once they reach 200 something must happen a wrong news will spread around a scandal must come whether it's true or not have you not seen students their last and final exams they will go and the spirit will start moving them carry something to the exam hall they don't want to but it's an altar you are too weak to fight it you will promise that you will not take it and you take it as soon as you are sitting they just catch you and they said your entire six seven years cancelled brothers and sisters it's an altar there are families that as a family they are victims of abuse everybody mother father brothers all the daughters will eventually meet a man of god somewhere and all the man of god will do is to destroy them it will happen they are scattered in every place but their experiences are the same you will see them and like them but at the end of it you must leave them with pain they think is that the ministry is bad but the issue is the altar there are altars you give birth to men they must die they must die something must kill them no matter how healthy they are they must die brothers and sisters i have seen this evil it exists tonight we are going to pray are we together when it's time i'm not going to give you a prayer point when it's time to pray we are going to pray tonight you are going to erect many of you as you pray tonight you will see what will begin to happen to you i want us to lift up a fire in this place tonight and say lord this demon that molests me in my sleep i can't be pretending that it's not there again these animals that come to me in my sleep no I started a business well why is it that I start good things something evil must come lift your voice and pray
I tear down altars. I use prayer as a system of authorization. This cause must stop. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight. I stand. On behalf of myself. And my family. And I declare. That every altar. That is speaking. Against my destiny. I tear it down tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Shabra takata. Shabra toko sotobash. I tear it down. Altars of delay. Altars of barrenness. Altars of failure. Raka toko to bereketesh. Le berekoto sotobesh. Hallelujah. Please pair yourselves two two. Find find a partner and hold a hand. Be serious, please. If the person by your side is not serious, leave him alone. We are doing serious business tonight. Find a partner and hold a hand. Shabakato labakaria. Embretekas katafras kalabakuria dabashi. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every legal access I have given for these altars to speak against me knowingly and unknowingly. Tonight I invoke the blood. Let the blood speak. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every legal access. Every legal access. Every legal access. I have given any altar of darkness. Shabras Kata. Matele Kotosia. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone else. Look for another partner. Hold the hands of someone else. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of failure. I speak to you. In the name of Jesus. I tear you down. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of stagnation. I speak against you. I speak against you. I curse you by the God of heaven. By the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many miracles in people. We are still praying, please. We are still praying. Shalapakaya. We are still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We are still praying. We are making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Altars that are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny because of where I'm coming from. I prophesy tonight. Your hold is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Altars associated with territories, associated with territories. I come against you by the God of heaven. I come against you. Pray, pray. I come against you. Hallelujah. 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 Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years but it looked like it has not manifested because every time it's reaching you an altar lifts up we are going to call it back are you ready to pray say after me in the name of Jesus every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight by prophecy I call you back to my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray and watch the God of wonders authorize the God of heaven and watch restoration happen in your destiny restore relationships restore finances restore mantles restore ministries Hallelujah. 
Rada Catoroso Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen, I don't care how many, call it. Listen, you are going to call them one by one and say, I stand as an altar and I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them by name. Call them. I bring you out of this wasteful living. Call them. Shake it, man, and I'm a consumer. Ente 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 consumer. La planta scatta barando sopra che. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Be serious. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. Everywhere my favor is. In the name of Jesus. I command it to my life now. Lift your voice and pray. You don't have to travel. Call it everywhere it is. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen. I want you to pray and talk to God. Tell him, Lord, I'm part of this apostolic family. The altar you have erected here must speak for me. I want my life to show it from today. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with understanding and watch what happens to you. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Understanding, Lord, I inform the altar that you have with your servant. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Marketos soto bo shabada, la prende ketos kosoto pe seketia. I declare it. Marketos soto pe seketia.
Alléluia. Alléluia. Many of you may not realize what is happening to you. Please, I don't want you to idolize this teaching. No. It's not about religiosity. It's about proper understanding and application. So it's not just coming to lie down here. That, no, 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 no. The altar is a revelation. We are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives. Listen, because many of us here, the only time you pray is when you are together with people. Satan started attacking you. He gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life. He will never attack it at once. He can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication, the grace to pray, I receive it right now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Fire, fresh fire on my altar. Fresh grace to pray. Fresh grace to fast. Fresh grace to intercede. Fresh grace for warfare. I command every dead prayer life around my life. Come back to life. Come back to life. hallelujah hallelujah one last prayer point and i'll pray for you there are many of us the spirit of god started revealing things to you because you were meeting with him every day but something happened no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life no access to illumination you used to be you used to have projects that you and god are on you can literally say we are on a faith project but now there's nothing like that your life has become stale and barren some of you is when you started ministry this this so-called thing called ministry that's what destroyed you we are going to pray a prayer of restoration and the fire will fall upon you i like you to pray say in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say holy spirit i ask that you manifest yourself once again in my life holy spirit i cry for intimacy afresh with you lift your voice and begin to pray intimacy spirit of the living god do not be far from me again pray pray let it not be that you're just a stranger we were closer than this and something happened. Pray. Restore that intimacy. Restore that sweet fellowship that I once had with you. Fellowship that nothing in this world could be compared with. hallelujah please lift your hands I tell you there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies I pray for you now I'm praying for you in the name that is above all names everyone hearing me and standing here whether inside or outside you have prayed if there is any altar as i speak now that is speaking against your life 
at the count of three i command those altars to catch fire right now please get ready the power of god will come on people one two three i command those altars now be broken be broken be broken be broken I command those altars be broken be broken listen lift your hands I'm challenging altars of failure listen just I'm praying for you don't pray just listen to me because I'm seeing people here failure it has nothing to do with academics it makes you fail in everything I stretch my hands May that fire anyone here who is a victim, that altar is speaking. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now by fire. I judge those altars now. There are altars that cause men to see things and never handle it you see a job they tell you it's yours quarter to reception everything changes i don't know who belongs to that category but in the name of jesus inside and outside following online anyone who has been a victim of total failure and disappointment right now in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus I command total deliverance help them help them please total deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ put down your hands ladies keep your hands lifted I will tell you why I'm praying There are many ladies let me tell you many people don't know why things don't work especially for ladies it's not because you are ladies and it's not because you are bad it's because many ladies are spiritually ignorant of what they represent in the realm of the spirit a lady is not just another human being who is not a man no it's more than that a lady is the chiefest point of entrance even among men that's why she has a womb the only lady a lady is a gate in the realm of the spirit it's not just a human being keep your hands lifted that's why demons look for them that's why spirits look for them that's why altars speak against them it may not be caused by you but I'm praying for you keep your hands lifted you may not understand what is happening Lord Jesus I'm praying now that any one of our sisters here whose family and destiny is under siege I'm declaring anyone who made a covenant with the earth for your destiny anyone who passed through fire to make a covenant with your destiny in the name that is above all names I decree and declare upon every lady now be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus from those yokes those yokes that cause fibroid those yokes that cause fibroid those yokes that cause lungs around your body those lungs those barrenness i cause it by the god of heaven i cause it by the god of heaven hallelujah I'm seeing 11 ladies the Lord is opening my eyes listen now I'm seeing rings on all their ten fingers and this is a very serious demonic case and the Lord wants to set them free now you will not know it is not something you know one of you used to see it physically you see rings on your hands in the name of Jesus 11 people ladies especially 
I'm praying now. Some are inside, some are outside. Doesn't matter where you are. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. Lord, I pray whoever came into this meeting, whether online, offline, and belongs to that category, in the name of Jesus, as I'm praying now, I command, I'm praying now, the fire will fall on certain people. 11 in all I see. Lord, let it be right now. I, I break that marriage. I break that spiritual marriage. I break that spiritual marriage. My God, my God, my God, my God. I break that spiritual marriage. There's one of them you should have married. But this is what stops everybody that comes around you. I command it broken right now. 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 Hallelujah. Our time is gone. The Lord is asking me to minister to someone here. Somebody comes to you in the night physically. I'm not talking of vision. Physically. You feel somebody lying down around your bed. Sometimes sleeping with you. You are feeling it. This is not guesswork. This is something you know is happening. Wherever that person is. Right now in Jesus name. I stretch my hands. There is no escape. In the name of Jesus. Whether inside or outside. You are in this category now. I command judgment. Judgment on any strange spirit. Judgment on any stranger. Judgment on any stranger. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know, but we're rounding up. Please just, just be patient with me. I'm hearing in my spirit Yoruba people. Yoruba people, there is there is something, a deliverance that God is bringing now to Yoruba people. You know how God acts as I'm speaking now. Everyone associated with that territory, I place the word of God now. In the name of Jesus, let that sword of deliverance, I command that double-edged sword to locate everyone from the southwestern part now who is in need of territorial deliverance. I command it now, inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, no escape. No escape for any power of darkness. Yeah, na 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 na. Yeah, na 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 na. Every mark of disfavor that is on anyone's life here, you watch what happens to your life from this meeting. Anyone carrying any mark of disfavor where men should bless you something about you becomes an irritation i command that mark to be erased from your life now ah, i command that mark to be erased from your life now i command that mark to be erased from your life now I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I'm watching what is happening from the spirit realm, not the physical realm. When you see me keep praying, it's because God is doing something. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I say it again. I command that mysterious mark to be erased from your life right now. anyone here who has any member of your family that has refused to give birth they have tried and tried 
and the devil would just not let them have a child either she would not take in completely or she would take in and then mysteriously lose the child or the man will not be able to get her pregnant i don't care what situation but please even if you are not the one standing for them i'm praying distance is no barrier i stretch my hands now and i decree by the altar of prayer we authorize angelic assistance to those people right now we authorize angelic assistance right now hear me it was an angel that came to assist mary to get pregnant he showed up and said i was sent your own is to just agree and she said be it unto me and she got pregnant i declare and declare that any manifestation and encounter that they need to go through to have their child i command it to happen now in the name of jesus let me pray finally for your finances I believe in God's people empowered there is no triumph when everything around your life is not working I want to speak because some of you are titers some of you are sowers some of you bless honor God's house but simply because of certain systems that manifestation can happen as laziness that manifestation can happen as disfavor everywhere in the name of Jesus I decree and declare nobody here is too young to prosper don't listen to that nonsense nobody here I'm not talking of business I'm not talking of a job I'm talking of a system in the spirit where God will lift you in a way that will make you afraid I decree and declare now as I'm praying for you I'm also praying for families because there are families that need help as a matter of emergency I pray that the demon sitting on the financial destiny of anyone here sitting on the financial destiny of any family i clear it out of the way right now i clear it out of the way right now i clear it out of the way right now i clear it out of the way right now in the name of jesus christ listen listen i've shared with you my encounter i've seen that spirit that they call mammon i've seen it I've shared it here some years ago when I was praying and all of a sudden my ceiling disappeared and all of a sudden I saw a giant creature like him as tall as a mango tree standing looking like um like 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 a dinosaur a sea creature with a tail and the tail was another living thing on its own it could detach from that creature and move and the eyes were as big as a human head two red fierce eyes and he was looking at me and he said so you think you can bring God's people into blessings and that was the end of the encounter that was it was that day I knew that wealth is spiritual it's not about what you do it's about what is backing you you can do everything to a poor there must be a spirit assisting you I call for the ministry of the Holy Spirit over your finances and I command extraordinary results from today I command strange results from today I command strange favors from today I command strange results from today strange encounters with destiny help us in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to wave your hands to Jesus the Bible says to pray with Thanksgiving tell him thank you thank you this is part of a fruitful prayer you don't round up a prayer with amen you round up with prayer with genuine thanksgiving lord i thank you i know it is done i receive it because you are faithful this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us it's our confidence hallelujah now keep your hands please look at me i want to encourage everyone as much as god grants you grace I want you to use this week make sure that no day passes without you creating time to blast in tongues at least an hour at least an hour 
no if you think you don't have the strength find somebody who god has graced at least an hour tuesdays you are sure you can come and our prayer department is there praying you don't have to be a part of the, the a member of the prayer department join them because it's a season where we are breaking things through breaking things through in the realm of the spirit every day take out time i would recommend night times for you because most people are working or as students you may not have the luxury of time to get up in the morning or afternoon but you can maximize night times one hour out of 24 at least will not kill you i want you to cultivate that atmosphere carry that consciousness that the my prayer is creating an altar and that i am an altar myself and refuse to allow the devil play games with your destiny in the name of jesus christ now keep standing everyone i want to make an altar call now very quickly there are people here probably you came here for the first time tonight please let me have attention inside and outside and there are people here who the devil has been playing around with your destiny for many years and when you came for this meeting tonight as the word of God was coming the Lord was speaking to you that we need to start afresh again there are such people here right now I want to give you an opportunity to hand your life over to Jesus or others who you were once a serious believer but something happened around your life very quickly we have just two minutes for this wherever you are inside or outside there must be somebody handing his life to Jesus make your way right now I want to pray for you let's appreciate them as they come don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person somebody is coming clap for them inside outside if you're outside make your way in quickly god bless you god bless you young and old keep coming if you're outside please rush and come in rush and come in clear the way for them those coming from outside hurry up please hurry up quickly 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 it's not something that should take forever for you to think about you should know immediately young and old make your way to jesus the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run it to it and they are saved keep coming keep coming koinonia celebrate them let's encourage them as they come hallelujah i want to appreciate you for the boldness to come and make a declaration to jesus listen this is not just a poem you are reciting I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart because it will start a new dimension of living for you. Lift your right hand high to the heavens. Let the devil see it and say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe in you. I ask you to forgive my sins. I ask you to cleanse me with your precious blood I believe you died for me I believe you rose again for me I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I keep rising and I never go back again the power of sin the power of Satan the power of the flesh is broken over my life forever in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted father I stretch my hands to these dear ones and I pray oh God that you seal this decision with the presence of your spirit let tonight be an encounter that will remain forever in their lives I declare their sins forgiven and oh God I decree and declare that from today they begin a fresh and a new walk with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen a big congratulations to you now I want you to quickly follow a lady waving her hands all of you together in concert just walk this way follow the lady waving her hands and um, they'll take you outside and attend to you very very briefly very quickly please everyone quickly quickly make way for them make way. just worship him in one minute bless his name he's the king of kings the lord of lords our savior Always.
always an honor to appear before you because we will always be changed, always be changed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to cry to the Lord tonight and say, Father, give me a visitation one more time. Give me a visitation tonight. Are you praying? Give me a visitation everywhere outside those following us online. Let the entrance of your word give life. Let it give understanding unto me. Let your word grant me understanding. Let it empower me and cause me to walk in dominion. Jabra dos kalabashiki. Sebrens kalabado satali and abraka fasige de balanabash. Libros de abash kalabrondas kalibahari atakusi. That will show us the path of life. Let us hear your voice tonight In the name of Jesus Hallelujah Spirit of the living God We submit ourselves to you And we ask that you will teach us Help us to understand the kingdom and help us to access the mysteries that come with this kingdom and help us to demonstrate the reality of the life the power the grace of god that is resident within us we give you all the praise tonight we will never be the same our hearts are open we never get familiar with your presence in the name of jesus hallelujah god bless you please be seated I begin tonight I just want us to take a minute and just thank the Lord for the manifest miracles signs and wonders that he's doing through us among us can we just lift up our voices in one minute and say Lord we are not ungrateful people we thank you all who are connected with us to us around following us online join us to lift our voices and tell him thank you Jesus we bless you Jesus we acknowledge you as a doer of all things working by your spirit you only use men but it never comes from men we acknowledge you before the entire world and we declare that you are the wisdom behind the results that we command you are the lord of the outcomes you are the lord of every good thing that we celebrate in this ministry so lord we thank you Praise the Lord. Now, we are to start a series on the Holy Spirit, but that will be next week. I, in the course of the week, I had a very serious burden. We're still going to be on the series, but we just shift it one week. And um, I think that there is a lot we need to learn about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, and how to walk in the anointing. It's not enough to just have the spirit of God we must know how to be demonstrators of that power but God had put something very strong in my heart and um, I trust God that will be as brief as possible tonight so that we can pray um, 
for me when it came it was very very serious and I think that is worth considering we are going to be praying I'm teaching tonight on dominion over curses dominion over curses dominion over curses thank you Jesus dominion over curses any aspect of the kingdom life that you do not have sufficient understanding of please listen carefully you will always experience the reign of darkness in that area the bible calls part of the cadres of the demonic kingdom there is a class of spirits called the rulers of darkness that means their dominion is on the strength of the absence of light or an inaccurate understanding on how to apply that light you know misunderstanding and ignorance are the same thing in the realm of the spirit one who is a possessor of light but cannot apply it adequately and one who is barren of that light both of them are destined to have the same outcome so it's not enough to be possessors of light we must also be possessors of understanding the system in the kingdom by which we apply this truth you will be learning a lot this night and i trust that god will open our eyes in the name of jesus in the course of this very brief teaching tonight god is going to be opening our eyes and we're going to be seeing a lot of things as it concerns our lives our families our destinies but much more than the knowledge God will hand to us the keys that will not only help us to rise above it but help the people in our families to rise above it praise the Lord if I look at the baby that Shalhoma is holding and I call that baby an adult I can argue based on whatever scientific fact I can choose to even say she's not holding a baby whether I decide based on my perception to assume she's not holding a baby or not the truth remains the truth are you getting what I'm saying the Bible says for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth there are certain realities as far as our work with God and our work in the kingdom is concerned that if we do not pay attention to and sustain the grace to be able to bring those things under the feet of Jesus, we will live absolutely defeated lives. And one of it is what I'm going to be teaching you tonight. Dominion over curses. Lamentations chapter 5 verse 7 very interesting scripture please give us that scripture lamentations chapter 5 verse 7 i want us to read it as loud and clear if you are a child of god ready one to read one more time stop what does it mean and they are not they are what that means they have left the scene something started with them and their presence departed from the scene but whatever that something is the Bible says and we have done what the word born there is the word inherited our fathers have sinned and are not it was only fair that whatever trouble will go with them but the bible says we have borne their iniquity i hope you know the bible says all scripture was inspired of the holy ghost holy men wrote right as they were moved by the spirit the second scripture i want us to look at is proverbs 26 verse 2 
and then we'll begin to establish a few things. Proverbs 26 verse 2. I want us to read one to read. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, read please, so the cause causeless <laughs> look, look at this. This, this I'm already laughing because I don't know how many of you went to school but I think that this was written in basic English so the cause causeless shall not come in other words if it comes there is a cause the condition for it not being there is that nothing caused it that means the presence of any kind of predicament is a sign that it was intentionally initiated. The Bible says there is a law, and this is the law, that the, a cause, causeless, shall not come. It didn't say shall not stand. It will never even manifest in the first place. So the fact that it was able to appear in the scene of your destiny, regardless of what caused it, this law was properly obeyed for it to find expression. It says a cause, causeless, shall not stand. It shall not come. There are so many believers who do not understand the laws of the kingdom and the systems of God like we have been discussing here. This is part of accessing spiritual intelligence. And... Um, we confess so many things we do not understand in the body of Christ and we are largely victims of situations and circumstances. There are so many people who do not even believe that there is such a phenomenon in the dealings of men in the earth called a system where men can experience what the Bible calls a cause. The word sounds insulting. The word sounds antichrist. The word sounds degrading. But it's interesting to know that the first person who used it in the Bible was God. <laughs> the first person to reveal to us that there is a possibility that a man's life can be programmed to experience woes was not even Satan. It was God Almighty. Now think about this. God himself is using something. Are we believers? Ah, look at you looking at me as if you left your Bible one year ago. Is it not in your Bible? When man fell, the Bible says, and the Lord God had the voice. I mean, and they had the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day, correct? And he came and said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, who told you you were naked? Then he said, the woman. This madam you have kept close to me, did this and that and that. And because of her, I got into trouble. Woman, what is this that you have done? She said, the serpent. And he turned to the serpent. And the Bible clearly, clearly tells us, number one, the serpent was cursed. That he would crawl on his belly and he shall feed upon the dust of the earth. Correct? Then God turned to the woman and made another pronouncement of pain in childbirth. Then God turned to the earth, innocent earth, and said, Cursed are you for the sake of the man. Thorns and thistles shall begin to come out and in the sweat of thy brow. That's the mystery of hardship. God, using that same statement. The second experience was with a man called Cain. When Cain killed his brother, and then God called on Cain, where is your brother? I said, am I my brother's keeper? And God said that the blood of the brother crieth from the earth. And then he cursed Cain. Correct? And when he listed those causes, a fugitive and a vagabond shall you be? And Cain turned and even negotiated. Remember in one of our teachings we explained that. 
and he said no 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 whoever sees me whoever sees me whether he has no business killing me or not something upon me will force him to want to kill me and god said all right i will put a mark without that mark anyone can kill you so it's not about who kills it's about what is making them want to kill you listen carefully please follow me tonight you are going to learn a lot a cause causeless shall not stand it's like saying every time you see water in this bottle it was intentionally put it cannot just appear write this down what is a cause ah looked around and suddenly realized that you've been so good to me your mercy is everlasting undenied overwhelmed who am I that you are Who am I that you hear my cry when I call you? Who am I that you are mindful of? Yeah. Who am I? You're the source of my strength, not you. The strength of my life, not you. My hope and my joy, not you. My confidence. You. You're the source of my strength. Are you? The strength of my life. Are you? My hope and my joy. Are you? My confidence. Are you? Oh. That means the operation of a course cannot be studied intellectually. You must be able to study from the standpoint of the realm of the spirit. A course is a mystery. The second thing I want you to know about a course is that a course is a spiritual force. A course, listen carefully, is a spiritual force. A cause is a spiritual force. Are we together? Number three, a cause has magnetic characteristics. Like you're talking magnetism, an attracting power. It can attract certain things to its victim. I'm taking out time to help you understand this. Let's take it very carefully tonight. A cause is a mystery. A cause is a spiritual force. Then a cause is magnetic. It has an attracting power. Number four. A cause is always negative in its manifestation. A cause is always negative. In its manifestation there's no such thing as positive cause no what is a cause a cause is an invocation a cause is an invocation comma a programming a cause is an invocation a programming that is designed 
to attract woes and calamities to the life of its victim a cause is a what an invocation a programming that is designed to attract woes and calamities pay attention and listen carefully in the life of its victim it always has negative effects on the life of its victim a cause can be made manifest in the life of a person through utterances let's be very fast utterances and pronouncements utterances and pronouncements the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that utterances and pronouncements have prophetic implications whether from the positive dimension or the negative dimension every time an utterance is made the bible tells us it has an effect that is supported from the realm of the spirit that every time i open my mouth to utter an utterance the bible tells us whether it was done in ignorance or it was done intelligently that there is a support system in the realm of the spirit that helps to back the outcome of that pronouncement so the bible says say not before an angel i made a mistake causes can find expression through written words this is largely seen in not much of this is understood in christianity but when you study world religions you find out that there are many religions that um, work like a legal system they have from slates to books to mantras to manuals and all kinds of things and all of these gadgets and these documents are a system and whenever they are invoked in a certain dimension and a manner they have capacity to program woes upon the life of the people. These are the basic ways that the Bible reveals to us that a cause can be communicated to an individual. Now, very quickly, what is the character of a cause? I'm being very, I'm, I'm talking tonight like a lecturer because I want us to pray and I really want everybody to understand this. It is easy to know that a territory, listen carefully, maybe let me change the word and call it a siege. Let me change the word and call it woes so that it will psychologically relate to you. But the name is a cause. If I change the name, it's only for your comfort, not to change the reality. It is called a cause are we together our idea of a cause is someone who offends you then you make a pronouncement in anger and it brings a cause no no it is that idea that makes us feel guilty say no 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 i didn't offend anybody no in this world once you are alive you have to find out what happened before you because you can be a victim of a story that predates your existence. Are we together now? It is easy to know that a personality, a family, a territory is under a cause. The first indication of the presence of a cause in a life and a family is patterns. Repetition of negative patterns that seem to veto the individual's prayer life that seem to veto the individual's supposed spiritual activities please pay attention patterns patterns the classic indication of curses and blessings in the bible is patterns patterns the same way the same way you can know that a man, a place, an individual is blessed. There is a track record of 
frequent happenings regardless of the condition are we together yeah so we look at the life of abraham isaac jacob the israel of god and we see a pattern everyone who spoke against them was judged by god there was something upon them every time they violated his dictates they were given to their enemies it was a pattern patterns are very common in the lives of people now we just pretend that they are not there you see let me tell you something one of the major reasons why people do not rise in power and faith listen carefully is because of insincerity when you want to approach spiritual things you must be open-hearted and sincere are we together your heart must be broken and contrite this pattern ranges from all kinds and it happens everywhere there are patterns as far as finances are concerned there are patterns as far as family lives are concerned you turn and look around the average family in africa and you will know that there are patterns now pay attention and follow me to the end of the lecture don't be quick to just say no 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 no. but it doesn't exist i think i did something about it a cause causeless if it still remains the cause is there a cause causeless a cause causeless if i have a boil in my hand and i go to doctor if i come to you and i have a boil in my hand you will tell me that this boil is a reaction it's an effect of something is that true the boil is showing that something is wrong so the cause is not the failure the failure is a message the patterns are a message they are not the cause the cause is spiritual the cause is an atmosphere it's like a cloud it's like a mantle that an individual can carry has capacity to break barriers has capacity to follow you it can pursue a man it can overtake a man the bible personifies a cause in deuteronomy 28 you see that he spoke to them a list of blessings and then causes he said it will pursue you and overtake you travel to london travel to uk travel to your village go to school marry be wherever it can follow you it has that capacity that limitless ability a quality only given to spiritual things a cause is not failure a cause is not barrenness a cause is not retrogression all those things are messages they are symbols that signify the presence of such an atmosphere upon a man hallelujah are we blessed Joshua chapter 7. Let's look at it very quickly. Something interesting happened there. We'll read verse 1, then we'll jump to verse 10 to 12. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1, and then we'll jump to verse 10 to 12. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of what? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against who who carried something god was angry against help me now I, I, there's a revelation i want to show you who participated in the loot help me did they loot as a congregation did he consult them to loot the bible says he smuggled an item that he was prohibited to carry correct and then what happened the anger of the lord was kindled against who verse 10 and the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou toss upon thy face? Because they were defeated. A small city defeated them. And Joshua went to God. Israel had who sinned? It never said Achan had sinned. We are Bible students. It never said Achan had sinned. He said Israel had sinned. And they have transgressed my covenant which i commanded them for they have even they 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 have even taken
speaking of their costing and have also stolen and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff verse 12 therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turn their backs before their enemies why they started by taking something at cost and in verse 12 they themselves were one man whose eyes saw something and he said no I can't let this thing go like that and he smuggled it quietly and put it in his pocket and God was watching and God said Israel you have seen and all of them think of the innocent people that died in the war they were all preparing oh God will give us I mean if God gave us Jericho what is AI a small town and in their midst someone smuggled an item and all of a sudden they went to battlefield imagine them moving warriors and they were utterly defeated and Joshua the embarrassment was too much and he went back to God crying and God said stand up please this is not the issue of prayer you need to understand I need to give you understanding don't just lie down crying for nothing he said Israel has seen they took something and by this time he said they themselves were a cause he said neither will I be with you anymore except he destroy the accursed from among you the accursed was no longer a thing but a person accursed is real I wish they were not I would have just told you I was joking let's be serious now accursed is real don't you see them in your family I know you act like they are not there don't you see them around listen carefully don't you see them in the life of pastors don't you see them in the life of apostles, prophets, great people? A cause does not mean you are a sinner. Write it down. You have to get this. A sinner like one possessing the name. Listen, listen. I want to teach you something. Just pay attention. Whatever you don't understand, just keep following. A cause is not necessarily a symbol that an individual personally sinned against God. There are many families. There are many individuals carrying things in their lives that they can laugh around and pretend in church that this thing does not exist. It doesn't happen. But we are watching with our eyes. Remember the Bible says a cause causeless shall not come. Meaning if it comes, don't just probe the effect. What is the cause? Back to my boil example so i have a boil and my hand is swollen and i run to the doctor and say doctor help me and the doctor looks at it and smiles and says ah your white blood cells are fighting something are we together now they are fighting something or um what they call this thing fever sign ah pastor jt good to see you i didn't realize it was him hallelujah and then fever sign and then he tells me that that fever sign is a sign that there's war somewhere when others are feeling cold you are feeling hot correct you try to stand in the sun you start feeling cold again you don't know what is wrong with you that reaction is a sign that a war is going on somewhere whoever wins you will soon know if you don't recover it's a sign you are not winning and that means you must seek assistance and the doctor will say okay I need to introduce something in your life and then he introduces something and all of a sudden things start changing and you cannot enter your body to know whether you are winning so you use the absence of that evidence as a sign that you are recovering all of a sudden listen a boil that refused to go you put rub it refused to go you put local herbs are we together palm oil it refused to go immediately you know something is wrong this is not sometimes it can even mock you and go and come out or come out somewhere else the boy is saying it doesn't matter where i come out i can come out anywhere for as long as what is causing it is still there but when the doctor explains to you the issue is not the boil the issue is and if sometimes he will not even ask you to bust it he introduces something to your system then a boil causeless starts drying 
you watch it dry and it disappears and within a week you never believe anything is there then you now confirm by the absence of that thing that it is gone so don't sit down and tell me no boil is swelling we are all watching it grow you say no boil we are seeing it we are not stupid a cause causeless shall not stand you may not appreciate this because somebody is paying your bills now you may not appreciate this because no matter how careless you are you don't sow but somebody's harvest is paying for you so you are thinking you are the one sowing a day will come you will be exposed to a reality where you will now see that your life is dependent on the outcome of your understanding there are patterns that should not happen to believers if they are happening something should be dealt with it should not be ignored it should be understood and dealt with brothers and sisters hear me i tell you the truth by the authority of the lord jesus christ causes are real yes they are yes they are there are families today that all the men in that family never move forward they never rise they never become anything Ejimi, the men do not have to be irresponsible they are sincere people very sincere people there are families where every month per year somebody must die regardless of how sincere they are loving people it can even be after a church service on their way back they die after a prayer meeting rattling in tongues for hours you can't say they don't love god there are families if a man looks at you and says i love you even that man what will happen to him that night he will never repeat that statement again now he doesn't know why you too you don't know why you think the issue is okay am i too fat let me be on a diet no you are trying to rub palm oil on our boil remember our story i know many hard-working men hey, Jimmy, they have been working in their 20s sincere godly people till today they are begging there are people who start building 20 years it has not reached LinkedIn level no brothers and sisters we are intelligent how many graduates you see in a family seven graduates the only employed person in that family is a driver are they so stupid they are not lazy they will tell you they are not lazy most times we think it's because they are unserious and people erroneously say just forget it's just that they are not hard working please be careful some of you as you are sitting now if you are to be sincere you know things are not all right there are families when you give birth to people things happen there are pastors hey, me they refuse to deal with these things and they get into ministry anointed remember my story born again filled with the holy spirit working miracles but still oppressed by demons i went to people quietly and i said what is wrong they said oh, don't worry man let me tell you i don't think there are few people here that quote scriptures more than me the demons didn't respect it shocking call the name of jesus nothing happened how do you call the name of jesus on a crusade ground and somebody is walking out of a crutch and you call it for your life and nothing happens i knew i needed to understand something your victory starts when you are humble when you have you say no 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 there has to be a puzzle to this equation it can be god mysterious sicknesses there are people today carrying hepatitis a b and whatever is they don't have when you go to the hospital and say i have hepatitis they ask you who had it in your family even genetics support the reality of transgenerational transference there is such a possibility the fact that you look like your father should teach you something about the realm of the spirit the fact that you look like your mother and your born again did not change your facial appearance is a spiritual reality something listen something should tell you that this thing is real now, you better trust the holy spirit 
all of us men of God are not older than you by more than 20, 30 years. The Holy Spirit is an ancient spirit. It's God's own spirit. He was there when this thing started. Hallelujah. A curse causeless shall not stand. I have watched sincere people, a Jimmy, bound sincerely. There are pastors today as anointed as whatever. You look at them, you think it's the Holy Spirit. No growth, no increase. And it's not only ministry. It's a pattern. Anointed. Born again. Nothing happens. No growth, no increase. How many people have they thrown away from, they went to US. Just when they went, they went with complete papers. As soon as they were vetting people, one got missing. And you know that they did here. They said, look, let me explain to you. My papers were complete. They said, come and explain to your embassy in Nigeria. And they drive them down. What of all these devilish things that fly around people's body? Fibroid. Lump. HIV. Cancer. See it killing men now. Once a man is 45 years old, he starts getting afraid. Ask the doctors, they will tell you. Prostrate cancer. Once people start getting to 45, 46, they are, now, they are now afraid. Because of cancer. Once a lady is approaching 28, 29, even doctors start saying, marry fast too. Because any moment from now, and every stranger will start growing. So once you are 30, and you are not married, they will tell you, look, there's no room to hearing God. Just hurry up and get all your children fast. How many do you plan to have? Five. You need at least ten years. Hurry up and catch up. It's nonsense. The devil is a liar this night. Patterns. How about barrenness? A trace of it. How about fruitfulness? But that not productive. You give birth to ten children. All of them are useless. There are patterns the ladies must get pregnant out of wedlock before the wedding. Now, they are innocent and the condition that leads to the pregnancy is the same thing that happened to someone else. They don't know themselves. But it happened. I have counseled people like that. Brothers and sisters, there is such a thing as that. And tonight, God wants to show us that there is a system in the kingdom where people can have dominion. It is not just about what Christ has done. It is that we can be alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in our heart. We have claimed things that we don't know anything about. Let me tell you something about ministry in Zaria that you do not know. I think it was you, Sam, I was talking to. Minis the lifespan of successful ministry in Zaria is three years. You are in ministry in Zaria. If you survive three years, you know the mystery of continuity. After three years, something must arise attempting to rubbish your life. A scandal. Are we together? One kind of failure. Something will just evolve out of nowhere. There are so many people, especially music artists, They've risen from Zaria. Men of God risen from Zaria. But you don't know where they are today. You see a musician just appears. And for six months he's been invited everywhere. And after that you just go stale. Next. We are waiting for the next person. <laughs> yeah. There is a level the devil pegs men. And pegs their destiny. You never rise beyond a level. There are families... Is defined for as long as you oscillate within that ambient of relevance is okay but try to cross it that line will draw you back and say are you blind don't you see that there's a long line are we together men don't live beyond certain times the moment you are 35 death comes see I saw this pattern in my own extended family the only person in my father's family that is alive now is him and one of his sisters. I've shared it with you. Very sincere people. None of them died a good death. 
mysterious sicknesses that will rubbish your life and none of them ever rose to certain levels some of your fathers are like that they started working from 22 as it is now if you send them 5,000 they will kneel down and say thank you it's a cause it's a cause some of you are in school as students but they are calling you from home anything for this month you say mommy just take it easy we keep laughing and say there is nothing wrong see let me tell you you don't deal with it you marry it follows you there you don't deal with it you because as you are married once you are standing with your necktie two of you are bringing everything you represent and you move into the house do you know this is why people erroneously call people witches and wizards it is because they are open to the prophetic but because they do not have the accurate understanding of the word of god they see the spirit that is behind that activity and mistaking it for the individual carrying it out so they say no 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 and truly what they are saying is not a lie they say your trouble started from the day this lady one lady come all of a sudden you said you marry her you now got married you were a millionaire in five months five months you are looking for ten thousand to buy a new shoe mysterious things happen your first car got missing the second car police police caught it the third car is somewhere else your truck capsided like that the driver slept off listen and your life is reduced back and then you now go to a man of god i'm not i'm not talking against men of god you know i love the body of christ but you go somewhere and then the man genuine man of god now looks and says ah who did you marry Tosi. <laughs> thank god you are even still alive it's just an example darling just an example are we together now give me your hand now. run away from me you want to deny me now to sin. be nice to me be a nice wife are we together and then the man you see men will consult quietly they will announce in public is the anger you see publicly the man now returns home good evening darling or honey say see let me tell you I am throwing everything out of my life that is causing me failure he stops eating your food because he believes that eating your food is why he's now having high blood pressure and this lady is sincere she loves God are we together now and they cannot un why will you call such a nice woman a witch she may not be a witch but she's connected to something that is causing that effect Plus the one you are now bringing. We have not even talked about the one of the man. Hybrids of different formulas that are as a result of different spiritual things. And you find out that things don't work in people's lives. That's why in certain villages, they even apportion certain regions and tell you they are what? Cost. It doesn't happen in your village. Where they isolate a group of people and say these people, whoever marries who either die or something and sincerely speaking you go and marry out of bold face and say love is love love is blind and Jimmy said marriage will open your eyes <laughs> you now go and get married and find out that after the marriage two weeks after the marriage you are not hearing again one month after the marriage you can't walk again you see that tell me why a man who has been working in the civil service for 30 years should not have up to 1 million in his account how many children grew up with him two children he's still poor there are families win lottery get anything they will still be poor it has nothing to do with money it's a system listen the system of causes outlive those who cost it it can outlive it the primary purpose of a cause is to create a system for transgenerational allegiance transgenerational allegiance allegiance to deities ultimately an allegiance to satan a system to create transgenerational allegiance our grandmothers and great grandmothers you hear of one woman giving birth to 14 children never went to a hospital no cs 
out of those 14 children one was a set of twins one was a set of triplets and truly she gave birth to them in the midst of fire and you still see her a mother of 13 children standing her stomach is as straight as an arrow no fibroid no nothing why because before the delivery there is a priest who asks the god and say remember just like we agreed we have been serving you half of our guinea corn is hanging on the tree in respect to your demands so whatever look upon that guinea corn and that goat that disappeared and please this woman now all of a sudden missionaries had passion but no intelligence they came to africa now we love the missionaries but don't forget that they were very limited people say they died of malaria are, are you are you with what you know now was it malaria that really killed them they didn't die of malaria malaria was the servant like a tray that carried that charm you just come in and all of a sudden you organize a crusade and say stop worshiping this deity 300 years old of worship and allegiance you have the gods to bring the head bring everything burn it <laughs> and an old woman is just looking at you and pitying you jesus saves jesus heals they leave you quietly because they know that ignorance can alienate a man from the life of god and the moment you finish first you die all the followers die the remaining return and they say look this thing does not work if i didn't know this i would have been a failure all my life are we together i have seen this thing happen with all humility i don't know how many of my extended people especially from my paternal side that i can look and say this person is successful today no no Causes can come directly from God. <laughs> directly from God. This is not the cause of the law. The cause of the law is not the, all the cause there is in the Bible. Directly from God. Number two, causes can be transgenerational. Products of ancestry. What we call ancestral causes. There is such a thing. As ancestral causes there is such a thing number three self-inflicted causes self-inflicted causes there are programmings that can come upon the lives of people which is a product of self-infliction The cause that we call the cause from God is what I also call a sinner's cause. Every sinner is under a cause. Everyone who has not acknowledged Jesus Christ, please hear me carefully, as his Lord and Savior, believe it or not, you are under a cause. You are under a cause. What is the cause? The dominion of evil perpetually remains above you is a cause the moment you are not in Christ you qualify for the very cause that is upon creation that from dust thou art and to dust thou shall return that tons and thistles shall come upon your ground and with the, the sweat of your brow shall you feed there is a cause that is upon creation it cannot be taken away you can only be exempted from it hear me please that is the reason why the old earth will be purged there is a reason why fire will purge this earth there is a reality that is hanging upon this earth right now individuals born by default in sin did my mother conceive me he says and you are a victim of it mortality is a cause 
that came with creation. There is such a possibility that a man can extend his life. You can access the reality of God's life. Failure, the cause. If you are not in Christ, listen, you are not in Christ, you qualify for the sinner's cause. It's not something bad. It's not even about what you did. It's a reality. God's own pronouncement upon creation as a result of men alienating his ways. And then I said number two, ancestral causes. Ancestral causes are products of violating the terms and agreements. Products of violating the terms and agreements that constituted the basis for mutual relationship between men and deities. There was such a provision in Africa as a continent where men fraternize with deities. You see that in ancient Babylon. You see that in Egypt. The sun god Ra alongside thousands of other gods. There was a very intelligent spiritual system of fraternity with them. An agreement, a covenant. Causes operate on legal grounds. They don't operate by mistake. They operate on legal grounds. There is a legal system in the kingdom. And don't forget righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A system that God is obliged to honor. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. That's the liberty he's bringing to you tonight. Who can stand against my king? No one can. No one will. Oh. When you walk out of this, many of you will begin to see things change in your life in remarkable ways. Remarkable ways. Your prayer life will be so reduced to only worship because you will search around and see that there are no issues of concern again. There is such a possibility that a man can sit down, bless on the left and on the right, an effulgence of Zoe, the reality of God's life, practically at work in a man. And they look at you and say, Pastor Alpha, is it true that you came from Kogi State with this rest roundabout? The witches left you, they didn't leave me, I came out. I access the mystery because they are still there if they left you they will leave everybody there you mean you come from this state and you are not a drunkard no the drunkenness is still there I came out by a mystery of exemption this house I built it at what age 27 where did you get the money from the only person that built a house here was the king of the village and he built it at 63 and you tell them well 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 welcome to a new order where intelligence creates reality do you know you would die and you say no no the same mystery that built the house without resistance keeps the house You had the testimony of the gentleman diagnosed of prostate cancer and all of a sudden is that prostate cancer he would have died like a chicken then we will say how can they all lie Sharia? you see what how we convince ourselves as if the will of god is a mystery i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of good and not of evil i don't know poverty does not look like good oppression does not look like good 
I counsel a couple of me. They got married. Their wedding night, that's supposed to be a night of joy. Their very wedding night, a stranger walked physically to the woman and told her the same thing I did to your mother is what I would do to you. She true story. She got pregnant according to what she told me. They were even happy. People were dancing. And in the night, this stranger came again. And this is all he did on her stomach. And she got up in the morning bleeding profusely as if she would die machines don't diagnose causes machines cannot detect the presence of demons they only detect the effect of their presence we went to Ida we always go there for Pastor Alpha's conference. And I remember one of the years when we traveled there, he took us on a tour and began to explain to us. We went to greet the king. The man refused to see us later on. And then we went somewhere and I saw foul. Remember, market square. One market square that we went. I saw it there with my eyes. And people were passing. Whoever did the sacrifice just scattered it there. witchcraft is real if you see anybody rising he is exempted or yet to be a victim you hear what I said exempted or or the devil is allowing their ignorance to keep them going while they laugh at others I say it's because you don't know the day will do you it will scatter and rubbish you into pieces there are people who are so irrelevant as far as their impact to hell is concerned the devil said just allow them to be busy they think it's because they have overcome the day something about your life and ministry strikes hell you will see the reaction immediately you can be praying your childish prayer and the devil say focus on those who are really just leave that person and you can convince yourself that because nothing has happened you say no 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 I'm, i know what to say i don't talk too much and things happen the day that you ever say anything that strikes a chord in hell suddenly strangers will come to you and say don't do it again <laughs> brothers and sisters if you see men rise as if satan does not exist it's not it's because they have accessed a mystery that immunes them this is what i'm teaching you tonight but to refuse that this does not exist is the beginning of deception beginning of deception The Western world has been cheated in this area in a very big way. Because of advancement in medicine and advancement in all of these things. Oh, they leave it to all the spiritists and the, as the, the transcendental meditators. And all of them come. The nation of America, listen, their fathers understood this mystery. They walked in power. And when Satan found out that that whole generation had covenanted their lives to God, he left them and started growing with their children. He said, let's leave the fathers to die in the crusade ground. And he started growing with the children. And all the children came up with all kinds of things, you know. I mean, there's, if, if you are sick right now, you cough, ambulance is coming in five minutes. And so they don't believe it now. Look at the disaster happening in the Western world. Where people can kill themselves on YouTube shoot their children effects they laughed at us in africa before that we are the ones who used to behave like that you carry arrows now they have a reprobate mind a generation successfully captured by hell a cause is a mystery a very deep mystery hallelujah how many beautiful ladies do you know? Beautiful, godly, God-fearing. The painful part is nobody has even come to say, Kai, my dear, you know you're a pretty lady. It's not a lie. You know what I'm saying. It's not a lie. How many parents went to all kinds of rivers and were dipped how many times to be pregnant? 
there is a system in the kingdom for exemption but the first key is to acknowledge that there is such a reality on earth a lot of people don't believe causes are real it's foolish to believe sickness is real and poverty is real and not believe causes are real the same boss brought all of them how you know you are free from causes is that you also don't fall sick and you don't get poor if you can still get poor as a believer then make no mistakes to say a cause cannot come are you getting what i'm saying if as a believer i say are you born again yes are you blessed no i'm poor they say okay it's okay with time it will change are you a believer yes are you sick oh very sick are you a believer yes is there a manipulation of that no 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 are we not mocking ourselves what is the difference between sickness poverty and causes if we do not get this we will destroy ourselves every time i look at this next generation of koinonia our little ones do you know what i tell myself we have to run fast and correct everything that our parents could not correct in our lives before our children come correct it fast i look at these dear ones and i'm imagining a time that they will now start growing and all of a sudden they will become victims our parents were sincere people but they didn't know the way out so many of us we are in the middle of two generations correcting the errors of the father and setting precedence for a new generation is worth enduring are you hearing what i'm saying hear me you are you are hearing this message tonight if you are a lady here as you are hearing it just just know that you are you are hearing it not just for yourself but you are hearing it for a generation you ignore what i'm saying it will pain you to watch your children go through this and you will remember you had a chance to be free no. i cannot allow my children go through this let me suffer it let me go through it no matter what it will cost me if i go through the delay let it be that is me that went through for them so that these dear ones will move forward if i go through the poverty let it be that is me that will suffer it but not that i will bring a child and watch your child die like a chicken and turn and say father what did i do wrong and you say me too that's how i saw it everybody shout no way How many students do very well? Secondary school, brilliant people. Wayek, nine papers. They step into the university and all of a sudden, 100 level result, nine Fs. You think they are dull. They are conducting tutorials. But they enter the exam hall. They only remember in the night when the exam has finished. It's not everybody who is lazy. Let me tell you. What of recurrent sicknesses? There are people today, there is no month they don't fall sick. Go to the hospital, they will tell you nothing is wrong. Now the doctors are wiser. Thank God for spiritual people becoming doctors. They don't waste time again. The moment they diagnose you, they see that you have come once, twice. They'll say, do you know what? Find any available crusade and run quickly. Go to the front early and stand there and trust God to wipe your tears. That's why we need more spiritual people getting into our hospitals so that they will not allow people to die like chickens i look forward to times where god will give men and women of power the moment you are a midwife helping a woman give birth and the baby is not coming out you detect by the spirit this is witchcraft right there shagato soto labaya help that lady and all of a sudden you find out that that woman gives birth koinonia today is not rising because there are no demons let me tell you make no mistakes only god knows how many powers try to kill me every day i told you all the time only god knows how many people take my names to shrines oh it has never happened in israel there was a woman called the widow of nain what killed her husband she had only one child one child 
the husband now died the child now died on our way going jesus saw and said no this is not the issue of burial i need to change something here there are families you will see them in a community 32 people only one percent of them are men and all the men are madmen they are not they are, their brains are not even in place again madmen it's a woman that pays the school fees of children it's a woman that drives car is a woman that builds a house is a woman that does everything all the men become useless you see them playing draft in the morning and laughing and taking beer is a cause There are families with a cause where the children never see their grandparents either they are in exile or they die please tonight you are going to offer yourself as a living sacrifice that will change this you you will have to be a wicked person if you allow your children go through this thing i'm telling you what of poverty what of poverty there are many people who went to harvard came back anything they start die the day you want to start importing it that's when government banned it why was it exactly others have finished making their money just when you were about to start what of people in ministry they think it's normal everybody they raise disappoints them there is a spirit they raise so many men but they disappoint them there is no helper a man will be 30 years in ministry who has become a father in the faith you should have people to you should not beg for bread again but there is no man you call for help there is nobody some of you see some of these women walking on the street 71 years carrying firewood where are the children she gave birth to where are they one is in prison the other one is security somewhere and they are about to throw him out You find families where a lady has seven children from seven different men seven different men she honestly does not even know which one is the husband of which because a madman will just rape her somewhere and sometimes she can even be coming back from the house of god it's a programming it looks like a coincidence what kind of coincidence keeps happening you start business you crash you always lose money you always lose joy you always lose peace you always run into trouble they are chasing a thief the moment they pass you that's when police will say from this place pack all of them you were innocent it's a programming you reign you ancient zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and we, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Listen, help me. How can a man? lose a job in 1999 until now he has not gotten a job is it that dull see let me tell you something sit down if you can we'll soon stand up and pray Listen, listen to me. When you study the laws of mechanics, Sir Isaac Newton postulated a law. We call it the first law of mechanics. And this is what it states. That everybody continues in its uniform motion or a static state 
right it remains there until compelled by an external force to act otherwise through the law of inertia that if i leave this in one place theoretically speaking thank you i should come and find it in one place after a long time that's how the, your destiny will be if you sit down and you are wishing it will remain like that the only thing that will be changing is your age but your condition will remain the same how about men have you seen families where the men never leave their parents homes there is such a thing they bring their wife all the cousins and their wives to their father's house you see that the house they are staying was the grandfather's house the guy works in nmpc but cannot rent a good house you ask him why you say okay i'll do something about it 45 years he's still in his father's house they share the parlor they compartmentalize the kitchen if you buy your first car 50 years is that a testimony no you build a house at 55 is that a testimony take seriously what i'm saying what of ministries there are churches that this cause of poverty has still landed even on the ministers you will see a church with members but prosperity zero when it comes to finances you will never see increase in that area but tonight god put this body in my heart because it's time for somebody's lifting yes it is yes it is yes it is barrenness every look at me i want to tell you something now and please listen we are here to help ourselves but let me give you an information every case of barrenness is spiritual e-v-e-r-y every case of barrenness is spiritual let me repeat it every case of barrenness is spiritual so says the bible the remedy for every case of barrenness was spiritual and god opened the womb of rachel and god opened the womb of leah and god shot the womb of a milka david's wife every so that when some things happen to you you don't waste time you know where to go for to look for help quickly quickly recurrent deaths i remember one lady i can't remember um who now but there used to be a lady i remember the story faintly now that was dedicated to snakes literally snakes and the way snake molds this molting it happens to her physically the outer skin begins to you know swell like peel i'm not talking of all just skin irritation literally like a snake molting it's good to marry from the house of god because the job has been done you hear what i'm saying it's a good advice i'm telling you no matter what is pursuing you bring it to the house of god the house of god is a factory where true solution is provided when the devil wants to rubbish you he makes you successful and then he goes to connect you with a very wrong person and your life begins to know style a cause causeless shall not stand self-inflicted causes are results of ignorance and disobedience ignorance and disobedience ignorance and disobedience ignorance and disobedience self-inflicted causes are products of ignorance and disobedience no matter how born again you are if you don't tithe your heavens are closed that for sure whatever you think about the situation notwithstanding Seeing then 
that these realities are true what provision is in the kingdom to bail men out and exempt them I'm going to show you the system in the kingdom designed to set men free ready Psalms 102 verse 13 is a mystery very few people understand please give us Psalms 102 verse 13 read it if you're a child of God one two read three things mercy time favor mercy time favor thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her even the set time the kairos moment the opportune time is come because of that arise and have mercy let me tell you something about the mercy of God. The mercy of God is not an attribute for sinners. The salvation of sinners only passed through the mystery of mercy. But mercy is more than, more than a provision just for sinners to experience salvation. You have to understand this. The mercy of God is part of the attributes of his person. The mercy of God is a system a system in the kingdom where guilty people are made free the mercy of God is a system is a provision in his wisdom his infinite wisdom he factored in a provision although righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne but in his dealings with man he introduced a mystery let me tell you something about mercy look up mercy only works for people who are in time mercy cannot work in eternity <sighs> otherwise satan will not be where he is that's why he says his mercies are new every he ties time to the operation of mercy meaning whenever just like he said as far as the earth remains so when you can see the morning the mercy of god is valid mercy mercy is the attribute of god listen that provokes his help to your life regardless of your satisfying the condition for it or not mercy is a powerful attribute that is the ancient secret that the nation of israel used to turn around battles when they sinned against god god gave them over to their enemies and every time a prophet would intercept there was an enchantment they would have to chant something you are good and your mercy it was not a song it was an invocation every time they started singing that song for he is good and his mercy see how many times the psalmist uses it the psalmist was a benefactor of the mercy of God did everything wrong but every time God will want to come in, he will remind him. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Bible tells us that the Lord's mercy can triumph. Come on now. That the Lord's mercy can triumph over judgment. So when I get to the end of my road, I know that I am deserving of everything should happen. That should happen. Yes! My father sacrificed to idols. Yes, my carelessness. I am not a tighter. I am qualified for financial bankruptcy. The last card, I danced, it did not work. I prayed, it did not work. The attribute for bailout is invoking the mercy of God. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. Samson lost his 
strength to Delilah. The Bible says his eyes were plucked. The symbol of light in his life. And the mystery that surrounded his power. His hair shoven completely. And they took him. The Bible says they took him to their temple. To make mockery of God. Everything was over. But that Samson leaned there. They didn't watch the hair grow. He said, oh Lord. He cried for mercy. And the moment he did that. See. There is one prayer God cannot say no to. If you have never been confident of a prayer that will be answered, try the prayer of mercy. Invoke mercy. Lord, I know I am undeserving of this. But I invoke your mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy. Listen. It is of the Lord's mercy. Meaning, my lifetime is too fast for me to not have made a mistake. But it is of the Lord's mercy. Somewhere in my work, he creates a system, a provision. See, let me tell you. It is on grounds of this that the Bible can say, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. For when you think, Ah, there was a time his car now had an accident. Will he ever rise again? Don't go. Ah. the worst witchcraft in your life is to stop you from receiving God's mercy you are finished mercy and Samson pushed and the Bible says he killed more people at his death than his lifetime what of blind Bartimaeus thou son of David hold on he never said heal me the Bible says God will give us the desires of our heart I thought it would be thou son of David heal me he said thou son of David have mercy mercy is an open check and God had to come he left and came thou son of David there were two condemned criminals on the cross condemned once you hang on that cross it's over for you two condemned criminals one was talking nonsense like many people are still doing their quarter to finish in life and they are still making noise and the other one provoked his mercy and he said this day today not tomorrow today you will be with me in paradise are we together listen the mercy of god is an attribute you need in your life it's not for sinners the mercy of God was designed in your work with him to remedy for your limitations. There is such a thing as limitation. If I tell you every anointing that is in my life is just because of prayer and fasting, I will be lying. No. I have mastered the art of God's mercy. Years ago, during a pastor's, a pastor's conference, the ministers were lying down and praying and the minister who was testifying this said he went to lie down close to Papa Deboe to hear the prayer he was praying and he said for over two or three hours all Papa Deboe was saying was mercy mercy Lord you would think he stole church money he knew he understood to pastor millions of people you don't just need anointing you need mercy mercy Jesus met a woman by the well. When he met that woman by the well, they started a conversation. Number one, that woman was a prostitute. Correct? And then because of that, more the disciples, oh, no, 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 don't come and corrupt Jesus. You are a bad woman. And Jesus started talking with her. And she started touching his mercy. And at the end of it, that woman ran and said, come and see the man who has told me what I have done. Mercy. Mercy vetoes everything in your life. And when the door settles, you are still standing. That's why you see, those who know this, when people are dancing and saying, the power of my might has given me this. Oh, this great ministry, Koinonia, Apostle, what wisdom. You are such an anointed man. I just laugh and look at them. You need to hear my prayer in the secret place. The mercy of God. 
when David one day the Bible says when kings go for war David was meandering his balcony correct and he looked at somebody's wife she was baffing and from the altitude he could see her nakedness and he desired her the Bible says he sent and they fetched that woman and they came he now got a man's wife pregnant and ordered that they go and call Uriah in the heat of war not minding whether the nation of Israel would die they carried Uriah and brought Uriah Uriah said my king I'm here he says I just wanted you to come and have you seen your wife recently Uriah says, ah, have you forgotten the ordinances of Israel I should be there in the heat of battle and he got angry and all he did listen was to write a letter a man's own death sentence and gave him to the battle and the painful part is that he died question what was the difference between Cain and David Cain killed Abel blood started crying meaning when David killed Uriah blood should be crying correct David went wept 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 when all of that happened you would think that after the, the child died you will now tell the wife it's okay go I will marry you again who was the mother of Solomon <laughs> he did it again correct is David that will write his sins and ask them to sing it as a song if it had not been the Lord by my side now may Israel say if it had not been the Lord he will ask the nation of Israel to chorus for his message shall endure ever faithful ever sure and they will begin to sing it God want to destroy David David would just find he knew how to just tie God down and God said this is a man after my own heart a man that understand not even Moses was called a man after his heart mercy this is what our families need this is what we need this is what many ministries need this is what many businesses need let me tell you something we're rounding up there is a system to be a recipient of God's mercy number one a broken and a contrite heart write it down arrogant people are never qualified to be the benefactors of God's mercy For as long as you think by yourself and in your strength you are qualified and deserving, you will never have it. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercy I see day after day. the blood we invoke his mercy for you to sit down and believe your forefathers did not do anything you are a joker but the mercy of God has a way of exempting you the mercy of God has a way of exempting you from the rubbish and the nonsense that should be your lot the mercy of God can change any negative prophecy over any man's life regardless of what was seen about you A particular prophet now came and met David correct and then started to speak to him in parables there was a certain man who had a vineyard 
and somebody somebody came and grabbed the vineyard and david said who is that was angry say you are the one no watch this do you know david was supposed to die we have a series on mercy that will deal with i don't want to go there but do you know when you read that scripture when david asked for mercy god said that death had been taken from him david would have died david would have died the wages of sin is not sickness the wages of sin is death but mercy but mercy but mercy there are some of you here legally you are supposed to be failures in life so based on that concoction those who knew you had the gods to even prophesy it and what they were saying is right but mercy when you introduce mercy to the equation calculation changes everything changes so a murderer like Moses could now become a deliverer by the mercy and the grace of God he said it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed let me tell you one of the greatest ways to break causes hear me one of the greatest ways to end causes is to invoke the mercy of God the mercy of God the mercy of God over your life invoke the mercy of God over the works of your hands the moment even as human beings if somebody tells you sorry if I look at you now come and make I look at you and I say look you know you did this and I'm supposed to deal with you and all of a sudden you kneel down and say sir I am sorry do you not know that this position paralyzes me at once I look at you and say ah, I hate you but you have done something now that on a very good day what I plan to do for you I would have dealt with you I would have humiliated you I would have made sure your career were miserable but mercy and the terrible thing about all the well not terrible in righteousness about mercy is that every time mercy is invoked it not only solves the current problem it promotes you mercy will always lift mercy will always lift it will not just take away the current predicament but it will lift you and take you higher higher by the mercy and the grace of God by the mercy and by the grace of God so it says thou shall arise and have mercy upon Joshua Selman upon Koinonia for the time the time the Lord wants to lift me but there are certain levels of light and illumination I do not yet know and if I'm to wait until I know all those things I may never rise so he introduces his mercy and I rise to realms that even me I know that is beyond my level of understanding the mercy of God you will find yourself in the company of people you know your age and your level in life should not bring you their skills brought them but the mercy of God took you there. As we travel around, I have seen the honor of God by the grace of God and it never stops humbling me. When I see the things that people do on account of their perception of the grace of God upon my life. Sometimes I stand by the mirror and I look. I say, except for the mercy of God. Udash monkey banana who really dash monkey banana you see it's not false humility it's an acknowledgement of truth the mercy of God you are there boasting about being an entrepreneur and you don't have up to 100,000 in your account you better realize that there is a dimension of the mercy of God in this equation that can arise and lift you are you hearing what I'm saying there is a dimension in ministry I believe in principles I teach principles here but let me tell you the truth 
there are many gaps in this equation to success that we are still learning how it works there are still gaps and one thing i've learned is that those gaps are provisions that only god can fill that's where his mercy comes in and he amplifies and multiplies little things and your life becomes a sign and a wonder because i have seen women who never trained their children the children eight children all of them became great they got born again five are pastors all of them are millionaires they love god they are wonderful people walking in the ways of god but the woman and her husband don't know jack about parenting that one is not wisdom again let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength the bible says but let him that glory had glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me when you know him you know he's full of compassion and mercy i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good i will worship him forever love him forever because this god I learned certain principles I knew now I was already getting their results when I learned the principle I knew that truly favor and the mercy of God really qualifies the unqualified I have seen levels of breakthrough in my life that happened before I knew the principles that brought them yes this is true way before I understood principles of church growth and increase I had been seeing the hand of God and it's, there is a science to growth if you don't know it it should not happen but mercy 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 tonight we are going to invoke mercy upon our lives upon our families and take away this air of pride that makes you think I have to marry because I'm beautiful I think I'm intelligent I should be a millionaire by now the pride of men is the reason why they never get qualified for mercy one of the most powerful mysteries of exemption against causes against yokes listen i've seen people edge me they are not even born again yet but sincerely you know they call it in house affairs genie you've seen that happen they take their names to the Habalis and the Habalis will reject it and they are not born again. They don't love God. They don't know him. But their hearts are so sincere. Somehow they know there is a God out there and whoever it is, they are grateful to him. And God just protects them. Regardless of the fact that they are not prayerful, their hearts are wicked, yet God protects them. I've seen drunkards on the road that would drink to stupor and enter their car and drive safely back home they never fear death and somehow you even pray and say you're a wicked man god will deal with you but you'll find out that 10 years that guy is still drowsing his way in this world and not dead they never fear anything they hear that there is crisis bomb will explode where you know they are in the night you still see him back safe and hale and hearty you didn't die and he laughs That guy doesn't take communion. That guy has never attended prayer meeting. That guy has never attended miracle service. He doesn't even know what his genotype is. Honestly, he doesn't know whether he's sick or healthy. All he knows is that his heart is a sincere heart and it cries out to God. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing. This is what has kept some of our parents so because you know that if it's based on keeping the principles of the kingdom they would have died since it would have it would have swallowed them if the lord had not been by my side now may israel say i think of what men would have done to me when i didn't know the principles of restoration 
when I didn't know the principles of long life I imagine what would have happened and I wonder how many things I do not know now that I will know in the future how I walk in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death yet his mercy keeps me if all else fail invoke his mercy I give you a formula if all else fails invoke his mercy you have submitted names for prayer requests and nothing has happened Lord mercy for my family they are all sinners mercy for my family mercy for this yoke of darkness that is destroying men nobody in my family is making it and on legal basis the devil has his hold upon them and if you try to talk to them the painful part is they will not listen to you because the God of this system has blinded their minds but you can invoke mercy invoke mercy invoke mercy are you blessed tonight I want you to sing for me the stanza of that song Himela Himela Okaka help me who knows the stanza? Himela Himela Yes Just that stanza the stanza of the song that's what I really want to hear when I think upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day, I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy. Oh, hallelujah! To receive the kind of love that you give.
voice in one minute begin to mention the things you know didn't come as a result of your prayer life things that are attributes of his mercy and benevolence if you are ashamed of it you are not a candidate for mercy tonight And you are about to use it now ha. and he showed me joshua the high priest standing before the lord and the accuser came before him attempting to rail accusations and he said is this not a reed that i have taken out of fire and he said the lord rebuke you listen the mercy of god is a weapon you can use it and say satan I know you are supposed to destroy me but what about this I present to you the mercy of God I present to you the blood of the eternal covenant I present to you the advocacy of Jesus at the right hand of the father standing and speaking I present to you the sinless blood I present to you Calvary Lift your voice. Invoke mercy. Hey, Invoke mercy. Repeat your voice. Every voice. Tala, tala, the voice of mercy. Kapada. Repeat your voice. The voice of sin. The voice of failure. Tala, tala, Hallelujah. Hear me. Tonight you are going to use it as a weapon over the devourer. I know I've not been a tighter. You are authorized to destroy me. But see the blood. When I see the blood. When I see the blood. When I see the blood. You should be destroyed. But the blood will speak. Hear me. You live the wayward life. And all kinds of things happen. And the earth cries against you. But when I see the blood. When I see the blood. You were involved in all kinds of blood covenants and fraternities in ignorance but now that you are in Christ when I see the blood lift up your voice and plead the blood hey! invoke mercy come on now invoke mercy
Hallelujah. Hear me. The Bible says blotting out every handwriting. There are handwritings. There are records kept in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not live long. There are records in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not be blessed. There are records in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not have any child again. The devil says you wasted all your children and all of them have gone. There is a record in the realm of the spirit that says you have misused all the opportunities that you were given. But tonight, plead the blood. It can blot it out. Come on now. It can blot it out. It can blot it out. It can blot out. It can blot out. It can blot out. Was he praying? Hear me. A cause causeless shall not stand. A cause causeless. So if the blood of Jesus takes away the legal access, the effect must leave me to open your mouth and declare every pattern. You have been blotted. You need my life. Patterns of barrenness. Patterns of failure. Come on now, Koinonia, are you praying? Listen, 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 listen. When you activate this, you will find out that no longer will there be an accusation to say, Oh, you once in, were in the world, you committed 19 abortions, and blood is speaking, and that's why your life is not moving. It should not move. But now that you have invoked mercy, it makes the cause causeless. That means it should not come again. Are we together? You stole money. Help them, please. And all of that, you destroyed another person's destiny. But now that you are in Christ, what of the blood? He showed me Joshua the high priest. Please take seriously. This is what I did for my own life, oh. Let me tell you. For we rise to our access to mysteries in the kingdom. I want to pray for you. But we are going to pray one more prayer point. Hear me. The Bible says, the scripture we started in. Give us that scripture again, Lamentations. 5 verse 7. Please quickly, we want to pray and then we'll round up. Lamentations, chapter 5, verse 7. Our fathers have seen and are not. 
and we have borne their iniquities but now if I appropriate the revelation that I've been called out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every nation I can't go to hell because I, I was born in Kogi or I was born in Plateau State I did ask them to do witchcraft and now that they have done it if the land is cursed, I exempt myself I can't be a victim of another man's wickedness listen I'd like you to pray with all your heart and say I begin a new order a new order dissociated from the past alienated from the witchcraft and causes and yokes by the blood of the eternal God. Are you alienated every biological deformity every Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. This is our year of triumph. Now, thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. I want to pray for you. Listen, let me tell you if God be God, everything that you're carrying, I don't care whether it's self inflicted, you have invoked the blood. The blood provokes the compassion of the Christ. His advocacy at the throne of the Father does not happen automatically. It happens in response to an incense sent from the earth. The same way his high priestly ministry, the Bible says is in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek did not speak until he had an encounter with Abraham and he gave him a tenth of all. I want to pray for you now because there are lives and destinies under the yoke of witchcraft. Koinonia remains an uncomfortable place for them until it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be lifted from off your neck and the yoke from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Yes. I stretch my hands right now. You hear me? I'm hearing in my spirit household wickedness and the fire of God is falling upon all who are victims of that. I stretch my hands right now. Let it be. Shabbos Kupadabash. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Inside, outside, I stretch my hands. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, be free right now from activities of witchcraft. Hallelujah. Demonic activities. Strangers coming to you in the night to sleep with you. Men, women, animals, and all kinds of things. Coming to destroy you, plant rubbish in your body. I pray right now, in the name of Jesus, anyone who is a victim of every kind of manipulation in dreams, caused as a result of ancestry, right now in the name of Jesus, I command freedom, I command liberty, I command freedom, I command liberty. The blood speaks right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ he said the earth is caused for your sake he says with the sweat of your brows shall you eat 
But the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 29, it says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I want to speak and set you free. There is a cause of hardship. Many people are victims of this cause. Hardship has nothing to do with poverty. Listen carefully. Many people here, you are standing representing your families as I pray. And right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I stretch my hands right now. I command that yoke be taken from off your shoulder. Help them please. Be taken from off your shoulders. Be taken from off your shoulders. Right now in the name of Jesus, I command that cause of hardship be taken from off your shoulders. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, I declare to you a dimension of ease you have never seen in your life. Step into it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every yoke of disfavor, bad luck that looms around the life of men and women here so that you never rise is like a veil on your face and anyone who sees you walks against you I command that veil be taken off right now be taken off right now be taken off right now in the name of Jesus Christ and Cain said my punishment is too great he said I have become a fugitive and a vagabond he said all who see me will slay me all who see me will slay me all who see me will slay me whether they are strangers something upon me makes all who see me to slay me any mark any mark upon your life upon your business upon your ministry that keeps attracting woes keeps attracting scandals keep attracting negativism right now in the name of jesus that might be blotted forever be blotted forever be blotted forever Any strange sickness in your body through your blood that came from ancestry genotypes SS Jakatosia AS there's no such reality in the realm of the spirit that provision does not exist is a manipulation from the second heavens altering the genetics of men but right now in the name of Jesus every blood related issue passed to you by covenant i blot it out of your body right now i blot it out right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the classic sign of causes and yokes is the presence of patterns you usually are not the first to experience that but i want to prophesy right now i don't know what patterns you have seen around your life you have seen around your finances you have seen around your work with god you are up today down tomorrow you are serious today on serious tomorrow you love the lord today you love something else tomorrow your ministry rises today crashes tomorrow your finances is up today and is blown like the wind in the name of jesus the bible says every house is built by some man but god is the builder therefore i decree and declare that any pattern any spiritual construction that was built by an agency other than the christ in the name that is above all names i command a tearing down and a rebuilding now a tearing down and a rebuilding now 
a tearing down and a rebuilding now. A tearing down and a rebuilding now. I announce to the realm of the spirit whatever should have happened to your life by now for good but because of the presence of these embargoes there are dimensions you should have entered in Christ there are levels of growth levels of advancement and influence and wisdom and access that you should have been a custodian of by grace and for whatever reason certain objections have risen in the realm of the spirit to stop you in the name of Jesus Christ I provoke restoration right now 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 I pray over your life and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and the Bible says Elijah ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Jezreel. I want to speak speed in your life. I don't know what tied you down. By now, according to the program of God for you, you should have entered certain levels. You should have been the mother of four children now, but you are yet to have one. Therefore, I command speed. Step into it right now. In the name of Jesus, I command speed. Speed of accomplishment. Speed of accomplishment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point I want to pray for you. For there is an unction that can come on a man. There is an anointing that can produce an outcome that is not available in the earth. There is an anointing that is called the breaker anointing. The yoke destroying. There is such a provision in the kingdom to not only be set free but to be a possessor of a spiritual substance that is capable of causing everyone within the influence of your grace to come under the influence of the liberty that you possess is an anointing there is a provision in the dealings of God with men where men can carry atmospheres that have prophetic implication to all those who come within the circumference of that atmosphere you will not have the time to pray for everybody but you can carry a climate I want to release a grace and unction upon your life that you will go back home you will go back to regions you will go back to places you will enter your room there are physical territories that are caused but like Mara the water you will pick it and in the name of Jesus you will change that situation like the listen 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 the Bible says that the prophets were eating and they said there is death in this food and he said bring me flour and he put it and said go ahead and eat there is an ability there is an unction that can fetter the plants of darkness in the name of Jesus wherever you are like a mantle may that anointing come upon your life right now Soto Sota Lekre Tosketerika a breaker anointing the grace and the unction carry the fire carry the grace carry the unction command deliverance make environments cost free in the name of Jesus may your presence your presence in your home your presence in your office your presence in your ministry sustain an ability to nullify ordinances nullify yokes and causes an enchantment surely they shall gather but because their gathering is not of God there is a substance you possess that will disengage everything that is of God receive it now in the name of Jesus thank you for lifting
thank you for lifting by the road and as many following us from any nation of the world listen carefully it says ye must be born again ye must be born again salvation hear me please salvation is the most trusted bailout from every cause and every yoke according to scripture it provides a system where men can be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light God's dear son a system where men can exchange death for his life and you are here standing listening to me everywhere inside and outside you have never truly made this commitment for Jesus Christ you may be a pastor you may be an elder and then there are others here at one time you were serious with God but for whatever reason your life went haywire and as it is right now you know that you need a restoration you need to run back to Jesus wherever you are for time's sake our time is gone please everyone stand in honor of this altar call I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain as I count one to five this is a serious business I want you to come out right now one everywhere inside and outside Quickly, please. Quickly. Clear the way for them. Two. Please run, 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 run like there's fire on the mountain. Run like your destiny depends on this decision. Three. Are you running those coming from outside? Don't sit back. And allow anyone tell you no 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 it's, it's just a little issue now is the day of salvation now is the day of salvation the bible says today if you hear his voice hearken not harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness four i still believe there are still people outside rush and join us now quickly rush and join us quickly rush and join us quickly Decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no. to salute all of you young man look at me stand up Kai. there is a dangerous spirit that I'm seeing on this guy can you just lay your hand on him Ejimi? just on his back I command that devil you must go now ah, I looked at him and I started seeing I saw a wild animal like a lion before I pray for you look at this look at this this guy gently came here look at this I saw a wild animal a wild spirit salvation is powerful look at this now you come and marry him you see what I'm saying now I'm not saying he's a bad guy this guy may not even know why his life is haywire anger problems that's why men slap and beat their wives and say sorry later and still do it Look at how many men are holding him. Look at this. I command you now. Let him go. In the name of Jesus. 
I bring upon you the victory of Christ. Mm. For the light shines in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. Be set free. Every legal access against you, the blood speaks now. Out of him and never return. This is by mercy and by grace. You go and never return. I tell you the breakthrough this guy's family will have from this night he's not it's not just him he's representing something stand up look at him look at the same person that five people could not hold come let me lead you listen when you stand to pray huh my friend my sister when you stand to pray you pray with all your heart and you pray it sincerely now all of you standing in front say after me from the dead don't be ashamed my brother you don't have to cry you're a nice person this is koinonia all of you say after me help the little ones let them be sure of what they are saying they are laughing they may not know what they are saying but guide them and let them be serious because it means a lot to god say after me lord jesus you are not reciting a point meaning from the depth of your heart say lord jesus this night i believe that you are the son of god I believe that you died for me. I believe that you shed your blood for my sin. Right now, I accept your lordship over my life. I receive the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I am a child of God. I'm born again. Spirit of the living God, come upon my life. Make me a sign and a wonder. I declare that the power of sin, the flesh, and Satan is broken over my life forever. In Jesus' name, amen.